Brags, I don't like to boast. They like hot butter on the breakfast toast. Watching flicks, talking chicks, I like to mow boat. Can River Man make it your check? Nope. So look at all these movies I got. Commenting like, mmm, should we watch them or not? I know they just be acting for cash. But I still got one question to ask. Like, why do you do that? Do that? Do that? If that was me, I'd be like, screw that, screw that, screw that. I'm an alpha, I'd eat through that. Do that, do that. Mmm, so why'd he do that? Do that, do that. Mm. What's up, everybody? Revival House Network, BTM back. Uh, we're kicking off February in style, uh, if you were to ask Zach, I guess so. Because last week I punished him with Jean Claude January, and uh, this month I decided to be kind to him and let him sort of run the gamut with it and, and decide what we do. And he picked, I think, a slew of his favorites. So, Zach, why don't you introduce what we're doing today? We doing a fucking classic baby we see i thought like i he told me i get to pick the fucking the thing we're doing this month and i'm like all the potential like just flashed before my eyes like oh fuck i can uh i can troll him in so many fucking ways i got how can i make him watch porn how can i like oh uh, fucking just the most absurd shit i can think of blackface exploitation we're gonna do fucking uh soul man, soul man. we're gonna do watermelon man if we're gonna do uh, technically watermelon man is a white face exploitation black actor playing that but basically yeah i thought about it and i thought you know what people are gonna expect the zach man to fucking troll the fuck out of aaron you know what they won't expect the fucking zach man to come through and do something fucking magical so i thought we're gonna do like a class exploitation we're basically gonna tackle the fucking original movies in the series of like movies that we always I mean, you know like we always talk about like oh we always do these sequels, sequels and we never do the yeah. original we always start out with the fucking lesser known sequels now he's doing the fucking originals baby and we started out with psycho so and this actually wraps up our psycho exploitation because we've done two three and four correct Exactly. So I guess we could dub this. What would you call this? Original exploitation? I I don't know. I so do you have in mind what we're doing for the rest of the month? Do you want to reveal any of that here, or we're gonna said, keep it a secret? You know, we're gonna have, you know, if you're on our Discord server, we've talked about it. We've thrown it out before people in the general chat, and uh, you guys know, and everybody else will have to wait. Alrighty, so with that said, we're going to go and get started. And it works out. Like I said, it's really nice to wrap a big bow on the Psycho franchise. And also, I love this movie too. It's a fucking classic. So we're going to go and get started. Um, we are, if your version has the Universal logo, that modern, colorful Universal logo before it, go ahead and just start it, cue it up when that's to black, right? So I have the 4K digital version, so it's roughly 21, 22 seconds in. So, all right, so we're going to go ahead and get started in three two one play hell yeah we see in that original paramount release that black and white logo to scan my baby it's a happening and now we're seeing the fuck the fucking bernard herman he blatantly ripped off our fucking guy uh charles band's brother uh with his fucking score for uh you know great movie reanimator he's fucking ripping it off for the psycho theme he ripped him off years before he thought about it, that bastard. Exactly. Years before he came up with it. Fucking, he's a time-traveling fucking rip-off artist. Let me ask you something right off the top when it comes to Psycho. Do you think this type of movie would work today? Because, you know, I, I get it. It's a full length. It's like an hour, 49 minutes. It's it's definitely got the length and the girth. <laughs> but it's a very simple movie. Do you think movies like this would pass today? Or is it so original to where everything that it created and started has become cliché? And, and it, you know, and it would be seen as such. Oh, no. Fucking, it, you, you know, it, it's possible. I never thought about it. I never fucking, you know, but it, like but they did try to remake this movie. And it was fucking widely regarded as, uh, you know, shot the, by shot. The, the worst fucking movie. Uh, yeah, basically, I got some uh, trivia I'll read while we're doing this. Was that Gus Van Zandt's follow up to Good Will Hunting? Or did he do that before? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure when that happened. I, I've still never seen it. I've still never seen that remake. I watched a Vince Vaughn movie, though, speaking of him, for the first time a couple nights ago, that Domestic Disturbance. Him wow. and uh, John Travolta. You ever seen that? No. It is. Uh, it pretty much falls right in line with those types of 
it's it's a, it's a total subgenre film. Like if you've seen this movie, if you've seen Pacific Heights, uh, or if you've seen, um, oh fuck, what's the one with Kurt Russell with the the Home Invader? Mm. Yeah. You know, it's a type of movie, right? Where basically John Travolta is a father to this kid, and his mother has moved on, and she has a new husband, but the new husband has skeletons in the closet there's more than meets the eye it's that time and it becomes like a threat to the family right it's not unlike stepfather it's kind of like stepfather mixed with something like uh pacific heights and all those other types of movies that kind of so it very, it's very much by the numbers but it's, it's enjoyable like it's an easy six you know it's a nice kind of friday night movie that you know it's like over an 80 minutes so uh and it's really interesting because it's kind of it's got Travolta and it's got Vince Vaughn and it's interesting because it's got Travolta sort of in the twilight of his big resurgence period right because you know after Pulp Fiction he was just getting thrown fucking tons of roles Hell right yeah. and this was probably like in 2002 it's it's early 2000s and you have Vince Vaughn who is sort of in the very early stages the dawn of his his like resurgence and uh you know it, it's very really interesting Exactly. So open us up with this movie. Talk about it. They're in Phoenix, Arizona, by the way, here, man. That's where I live, though. Exactly. Fucking. Here's a fun fact. Uh, she we got, got big tits, man. Look at those. Look at. They're pretty fucking monster. Monstrous, dude. Luscious. Uh, but fucking uh, milkies. Luscious milkies. Butt fucking. Absolutely. Let's butt fuck her, Zach. Exactly. We'll take turns. I'm, uh, I'll butt fuck him. You butt fuck her. Then we can swap. Okay. Then we can swap. <laughs> oh, no. We got Sam oh, Loomis God. here, too. That's the, the original fucking Sam Loomis. This started the whole connection with fucking Halloween. Whenever they made Halloween, they got the daughter of this actress here. And then they, uh, you know, Donald Pleasance, he plays a character that they named Sam Loomis because they wanted to tie it in with the fuck psycho uh, movie baby and then they went ahead and threw a homage to uh sam hayne glenn danzig because they were huge fans too exactly probably. our boy probably not exactly fucking those are a uh, big monster mounds those fucking tots fucking monster mounds. fun fact though uh she's wearing a white bra here and uh, she's got a white purse i never noticed this but i was reading the trivia that that was like a thing they did uh hitchcock he wanted to like at first before she steals the money and heads down that fucking destructive path and the next time you see her bra and her purse it's black you know black. and in this the the way this movie is I, let me say that uh, I, I'll honestly say the first one is not the one I saw first. I saw Psycho 2 first. And I have to say from somebody with that perspective, if you're familiar, I mean, everybody knows who Norman Bates is. He's a pop culture reference at this point. Every, even if you haven't seen Psycho, you know Psycho. You know the ee, ee, you know the shower scene. You know the whole mother thing, at least. You know the house. You know Norman Bates. Um, and let's just say hypothetically that's all you know. Or let's say you've caught a couple of the sequels and that's kind of it. So you just have a very general knowledge of him. And then you finally watch this movie, this first one. It really doesn't play out like you'd think it would, right? Like the mm -hmm. character you think, because you could argue it's not Norman's movie. Yeah. You know, and he doesn't even eat up a huge chunk of the movie as far as like when she meets him, right? There's this whole subplot going on that, you know, usually when a movie has a setup and a subplot, it's kind of we're kind of introduced to like the Norman Bates type of person, that main antagonist of a movie 10, 15, 20 minutes in. And I I feel like he doesn't enter to like a weird point in the middle. Is that right? Because she um, she's she she's driving to California. There's this whole money thing. It's just you know what I mean? He shows up 20 minutes in. OK, so maybe it's like maybe maybe it's a pacing thing, but it just feel it feels so different to me it doesn't feel very traditional in the way it is and in, in paste and whatnot basically yeah they want they wanted to subvert your expectations like the the book starts out from norman's perspective you meet like it starts out with norman arguing with his mom uh -huh. and like norman's different in the book he's like uh a fat like, like a, he looks he's like he's like he's described more like the human centipede two guy Right. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Whenever they made this movie, they wanted to make him more likable, and uh, you know, and then like, uh, fucking, yeah, they wanted to, to subvert, like, make you think she's gonna be the main actress, but then like she fucking dies. Spoiler alert. Twenty minutes in, there's our boy Hitchcock right there. Would you hitch his cock? 
Uh, would you, would you hit, <laughs> hit your ride on it? Exactly. Would I hit your ride on it? <laughs> Call up a fucking tow truck. The tow truck break down. You got to get another tow truck to get that fucking tow truck. Go pick it up and hitch fucking Hitchcock's a fucking fat ass dick. Well, I'll say it like this. So if, like I said, you're totally used to the, the, the lore of a Norman Bates in pop culture when you watch this movie. Okay, maybe he shows up 20 minutes into it, but it just feels like in the grand scheme of things, his screen time is minimal. Or maybe it's just that they barely scratch the surface on who this guy is. If you already know him before seeing the movie and you've seen the sequels and shit like that. Because obviously the sequels, Psycho 2 is Norman Bates' movie, like through and through, right? Mm -hmm. But this movie is a real surface scratching of him. You don't get much at all. It's just, hey, she stumbles across. Yeah, it turns into she's a person with a main problem. And then, like you said, there's a she's uh, there's a subversion, there's a distraction. She just it just kind of turns into like a really shitty day for her because her whole issue, this whole money subplot, this whole thing that she's doing, it ends up not mattering at all. She just kind of pulls an unlucky deck, an unlucky card, and stops at the wrong motel on the wrong night. Yeah, and she it just turn, it turns into something else. It, it it literally turns into Pulp Fiction, where you have Bruce Willis uh, and this whole thing about him um, basically cheating uh, w- Wallace out of the fucking money, and he's just trying to skip town. And they just somehow end up in a fucking pawn shop where all of a sudden they're getting raped. It's like what the mm-hmm. fuck just happened? It's it's basically it's basically that whole formula, except not except condensed into one movie. Exactly. I got I some trivia here. Oh, four thousand dollars or forty thousand dollars in cash. Fun fact: that's how much Anthony Perkins was paid to play in this movie altogether. Fucking that dank shit. But here's a fun fact: every theater that showed this movie had a cardboard cutout installed in the lobby of Alfred Hitchcock, pointing to his wristwatch with a note saying. The manager of this theater has been instructed at the risk of his life not to admit to theaters any person for the picture after the picture starts. Any spurious attempts to enter side doors, fire escapes, or a... Uh, hold on. My fucking phone just went black. <laughs> fucking it's asshole. I just, I just lost power while I was reading it. I wasn't even paying attention to the Oh, battery. it died. I wasn't paying attention to it. Fucking Dumb, how, yeah. how professional! How professional! I'm I'm gonna plug that in real quick. <laughs> I mean, if you were a professional, you wouldn't even need to rely on your phone, man. You would just have the shit. But basically, yeah, fucking uh, our boy Hitchcock. He uh, basically uh, back when this movie came out, theaters uh, they worked a lot differently. Where people would just come in and out. They had like showings. People would come in. They see like they come in in the middle of the movie. People were fucking stupid, I guess. They watch the end and then like sit around for the next showing, watch the next part. Like yeah, fucking. It, it, basically, it, it created a whole new standard for how people come into the theater where it's like oh you got to come in at the showing you watch it then you leave you can't fucking sit in and watch the rest you know another showing of it you pay once you watch it once that thing yeah uh now i know i'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit but as far as fact stuff i don't have like a cheat sheet in front of me but wasn't there something to do with the um there's a lot to talk about with the controversial shower scene, right? Like it was a huge deal that they show blood going down the drain, but wasn't there some kind of restraint when there's no blood on the knife when it's going in and out? Was there anything to that? Right. Yeah. Or am I just making that up? I feel like there was some, some talk about that. There's a reason for it. I don't know. I I never heard that. (laughs) I'm going to, I'm going to break my rule real quick. Just sort of as, as a, as a pitch, of our, of our of our Patreon because like now this is our second or third week uh, introducing basically patrons can join us while we're recording these live at the time and obviously they're pre recorded for everybody normally and they go up on Wednesdays but I'm breaking my rule I'm trying to stay focused on the movie and I want to read all comments at the end or open up the floor but I I can't help it uh, M- Mendoza is online with us and he just he just uh, gave us a great fun fact Anthony Perkins was paid in forty gallons of cum so I think he challenges your fact. Exactly. I bet you he would have accepted it. Fucking uh, 40 gallons of gum. Like, I could just unload that much on my own on fucking Hitchcock. Anthony Perkins. Anthony Perkins had a torrid love f- affair with Rock Hudson, right? And, and my, I think I'm correct on that. And uh, he was, he had a son, right? Like, wasn't he married to the day he died, but he was a gay guy? 
I don't know. Or or, or I, I I know he was gay, and then maybe in his older age, he he settled down with a woman. Yeah, he, There's had, something a, he there. has a kid, uh, fucking his son makes movies. His name uh, Oz Perkins. He he was going under Oz Good or something like that, but then he shortened it to Oz. And he uh, his newest one is that Hansel and Gretel, or uh, Gretel and Hansel, fucking the, the horror movie. Yeah, he's he makes really slow burn type of movies. You gotta be in the right mood. But Anthony Perkins is a real interesting case. And it, even so... When this movie came out, he was really young. Wasn't he only like 20? He was really young. I don't know how old he was, but he was super young. And he was nominated for the Best Actor Oscar. And it's almost like he was a victim of that Oscar curse where he struck lightning on his first go out, like really early in his career, because he just kind of became typecast. And he never hit that peak again. I mean, he's obviously legendary. And he was in a couple of things after this, like off the heels of the heat he had with this movie. Like, uh, he was on, uh, fuck. What is it? Uh, uh, Oh, what's the fucking train movie? Oriental express. Right. Or, or, or right. Am I thinking, is that title right? Like the one they remade with fucking Johnny Depp. And, uh, is that you trying out for your, uh, death metal band? Yeah. I notice whenever I, whenever I burp and talk, I sound like fucking Stallone. So I, I was trying to say, yo, Adrian. Yeah. So, I don't know. This is cool. So we haven't, she's, she's off to California. Exactly. The music, the music keeps driving this movie, man. And it's funny because the the music and the score that we hear right now is so synonymous with Psycho. And the movie's called fucking Psycho. You're just wondering if you're sitting in the theater in 1960, like, when's the Psycho coming? Because it even sounds, you know what I mean? like Exactly. But it's coming, though. But not yet. I seem to remember them doing the effects kind of odd. Um, like, you have to suspend disbelief a little bit. When we're introduced to Norman and he's hearing his mother call him. It's, isn't there, the way they do the effect of his mother calling, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, there's no way he's throwing his voice like that. Or, it, or there's no way he could hear from the house. Isn't there, like, some kind of weird echo effect going on? Like, there's no way. He's hearing it in his head, you beta. You beta cut. Quit, tr- quit trying to point flaws in the fucking movie. The movie, this fucking classic psycho. <laughs> I can try to make us hate this movie. Here's a fun fact. The novel upon which this movie was based was inspired by the true story of Ed Gein, a serial killer who was also the inspiration for Deranged, Confessions of a Necrophile from 74, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 74, and The Silence of the Lambs from 91. Yeah. They just Frankensteined all these different bits to Ed Gein's character, and it just created all these different offshoot type of ideas. So obviously they took... um. For, for Leatherface, they took the fact that he would make shit and masks out of people, use their skin and make masks. He would use um, their body parts to make things like mugs and chalices and furniture. Exactly. Uh, and the, the psycho portion was the fact that I think his, was it his mother? Like the, he would sew people. He would, he would like taxidermy people. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty much the extent to that. And uh, what was the other one you said? Fucking, the other movie. Uh, I don't know, Deranged. You ever see Deranged? That's a donk movie. No, I never saw Deranged, but there's another one that we're forgetting too. Oh, Silence of the Lambs. That came from his cannibalism side. So, Oh, yeah. I, I could say Ed Gein is probably, I know it's arguable, in a sea of so many iconic serial killers, he's got to be the most iconic just because of his impact on pop culture. Mm-hmm. And he was so early on, like, you know, around the turn of the century, right? Or maybe just a little bit later mm-hmm. that, you know, they really couldn't exploit it that much as far as making movies and shit off of them because the technology wasn't there, right? It's not like Richie Ramirez where you can have a Netflix doc. And I mean, we're just waiting for the Ed Gein doc because Netflix is, is they're just jumping on every serial killer doc they can exploit and get their hands on. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, when they announced that, that Richie Ramirez, that Night Stalker one, I rolled my eyes a little bit because it's just getting, it's like, all right, which one next? Like, we're just waiting on, I don't know, who's next? Like, the have they already done, like, the BTK killer? They're just going through, really going through the motions. Uh, and But honestly, I watched the Night Stalker one, and I, I still thought it was great because I'm like, oh, I actually learned some shit I didn't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't know he was a Play-Doh file. 
Neither did I. And that's the big thing I didn't know. And it makes sense why I wouldn't know that because since they never decided, they decided just to not take it to the, take it to court to spare the kids. Right. Cause they didn't need it to put them away forever and kill them. Exactly. They're like, it's not worth putting the kids on trial and it's not worth putting them through that uh, trauma. So basically if he was never convicted or he was never even accused and it never went to court and he was never tried or convicted of it, I guess it wouldn't say it in the history books. Right. It would just mm-hmm. call him a murder murderer. So that's yeah. So I never knew that, but God knows everybody knows he did it. But he was way. But let's just say he was way more fucked up than I, I ever thought he was. I thought he was just this guy that broke into people's houses and terrorized fucking California for like a summer. But no, it was like way deeper than that. Mm-hmm. He was a fucking chud too. What a fucking chud. He looked you know, like he smelled. He looked like uh, I don't know. He just looked like a guy that didn't shower. He just looked. He did look like every man USA though. Like every skeezy type of guy you see outside of a gas station. Oh, uh, I totally would have hung out with him. We would have, we would have been, uh, we would have been going to the same clubs for sure. We probably would have had the same stank. I read an interview today. It was an older interview from a handful of years back, but um, it was probably reposted because Night Stalkers was trending. But Kirk Hammett of Metallica, it always goes back to Metallica for me. He was saying when they came out with their iconic album, St. Anger, that everybody loves. They recorded the title track music video at San Quentin Prison, where Richard Ramirez was on death row. And uh, they they played a concert for the inmates, too. And uh, Kirk Hammett's a big horror buff. He has a horror convention that he's thrown on a few times. Not consistently every single year, but uh, he's come out with horror books and all this kinds of shit. And he's a horror memorabilia collector. He tends to lean towards... The classic universal hand, those old movies and shit but you know he, he kind of goes all over the place anyway he's into the, sort of the macabre he said when i was at the prison he was told by one of the correctional officers that uh because richard ramirez couldn't attend any of the festivities of the concert because he was on death row he could only hear it from death row them playing but mm-hmm. supposedly they said he was a fan of their music and the, the correctionals officer gave him sort of a souvenir. He gave him a magazine that was a subscription and it has his name on it, Richard Ramirez. And it was like a, a magazine with them on the cover. And it's one of his subscription magazines. And he gave it to him as a souvenir. That's pretty cool. It's not. I he, wouldn't I wouldn't touch that. He fucking he touched children. With well, hand. it's funny. He's he's acting like, man, is a really cool souvenir. I'm like, yeah, man, him killing all those people and touching all those kids was totally worth you having that magazine one day. I don't Amazing. know. You think uh, fucking Kurt Hammett or whatever, Hamilton, he fucking sniffs that fucking cover? <laughs> Kirk Hammett, Hamilton. What the fuck? Kirk Hamilton. Uh, Kirk? Yo, I was here with my main man. Kirk? That's an inside joke. No one will get that. No one River will get man, that. Riverman hopped into the chat. I don't know if he's still here or not, but, uh, you know. You know what's funny is if he re- if he that? joined the recording room voice chat, he would have saw the movie streaming and probably have been able to talk without being recorded. Oh, he might he might have hopped out. I don't know. He might have just hopped in and out. So, you know, Riverman, he's got better shit to do tomorrow. Well, it's Saturday as of this recording. Tomorrow is Super Bowl Sunday, and that's a huge day for Rivers. So he's probably just mentally preparing himself because the Kansas City Chiefs are going to the Super Bowl for the second time in a year. So it's going to be a big... That, that's fucking weird. I didn't even know the Super Bowl was tomorrow. The fucking things you fucking just don't know when you're not tuned in. To I, I don't follow it either, man. But, uh, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to ignore it because uh, I'm from Missouri, right? So I, when I look at the socials and I, I follow everybody I know, they won't shut up about it because it's a big deal for people where I'm from that the Chiefs are there a second year in a row. So, uh, yeah. It's a state called Misery. Yeah, no, funny, right? Kansas City, it's split. Dang. But yeah, so I was reminded, but it's not a big deal. I was reminded, I'm glad I am, because it means I'm going to go grocery shopping tonight, because I usually go grocery shopping on Sunday mornings, and I'm not gonna, just because, you know, everybody and their mom kind of goes out and raids all the snacks and all the drinks and shit like that for Super Bowl Sunday, you know, even though we're supposed to be socially distancing, distancing right? Look, her fucking, her purse is black now. It fucking it stained it did her uh, her pure white soul stealing that money. It made her purse black. She bought a new purse, I think, basically. So here's a fun fact. This is the first fucking time. Uh, well, actually, it's not yet. But like, yeah, uh, coming up, we're gonna see the first time 
in fucking movie history that a toilet is seen on camera. Yeah, what was the deal with that? Back in the day, you could never see bathrooms. Dick Van Dyke, you couldn't see a bathroom. They couldn't show the bathroom. They had uh, bathrooms, but they never showed the toilet because it's like, we can't show people sitting on it. What's the point of having it there? So they weren't thinking like, oh, so yeah, for a while it was like, taboo, we don't even show the toilet. Like, we don't want to show what people do there. I thought, yeah, I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was more of... We don't even want to show the toilet because then it'll give people the implications that uh, it'll imply that a bare ass sits there. And we don't want people to imagine Mary Tyler Moore's bare ass. Like we only want to plant the seed. Very beta. Very beta. And it's so funny. Like it's so funny when you go back and watch Mary Tyler Moore today. And like I said, they have the separate beds. Right. Exactly. And even that wasn't a reflection of real life. Right. But that was just for TV. These fucking, these Hollywood elitists have to fucking make it acceptable for us to start fucking each other and taking shits. Their movies. We didn't even know they existed before this shit. Fucking Hollywood elitists. I think. But anyway. Where are we at now in the movie, Zach? Give us a play-by-play. Fucking- that guy looks like Mr. Sprinkles. That looks like a younger version of Mr. Sprinkles from uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Maybe it is him. The timeline so- adds up. So a large part, this movie uh, in large part was made because uh, Alfred Hitchcock, he was uh, he was fed up with his like the big budget star studded movies he had uh, recently been making. And he wanted to experiment with more, you know, fucking, you know, low key style and like television filmmaking. Like he he used a crew consisting mostly of television veterans. He hired actors and actresses less well known, uh, you know, uh, specifically and, and like Vertigo. Uh, see, I'm trying to sound like I'm saying this off the top of my head, but I'm really reading it in the trivia, uh, which uh, Vertigo, which was later hailed as a masterpiece, you know, was considered a bloated over budget misfire by him. And uh, North by the Northwest was hailed as a masterpiece and it was a hit. It was a huge production. And it was also uh, very timely and expensive. So, like, Hitch, he decided to scale things back for the next movie. And, like, uh, another thing, like, there was another, there was a French New Wave uh, noir film director uh, that was coming out around the time this movie was made. And, like, he made a movie called uh, Diabolique. And, like, people were hailing it as, like, oh, he out-Hitchcocked Hitchcock. So a lot of people think that that's one of the reasons why he made this black and white, because that movie was low budget and in black and white. But most people just say, oh, no, he just wanted it to be black and white because, like, it was cheaper, and he wanted to be able to film it as cheap as possible. Baby. But it adds something to it. I mean, I don't know. I You can watch Psycho in color, right? There's ways of watching it in color. Is there? But it doesn't. I think so. Haven't they released uh, colorized versions? I don't think I've ever seen one. Maybe uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna double check and fact check myself. See, one of the it, one of the reasons Gus Van Zant remade the movies is because he's like, oh, kids today, people now in the '90s, they don't know anything about Hitchcock. I want to make the movie again in color so that it'll be a movie they watch. And it's like, why didn't you just take all the money and make a colorized version, like a really nice one? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny, like, people shit on colorized versions, but then, like, there's also an exception to where, like, The Wizard of Oz is, like, the default version is the colorized version, where they change, like, the black and white, the intro to, like, the sepia tone, and then whenever she goes to Oz, it's all colorized. But it but it plays into the whole theme, though, of uh, Wizard of Oz and why it goes color and shit. Exactly, I mean, but it's like, I never knew that that was even colorized. It's like, I always thought that that was just one of those first movies that was made in color, and they did it in a stylistic way. So it's like, if they can do it that good for, like, they must have put a lot of money into it. Like, you watched The Night of the Living Dead. So when did it, when did it go color? When did they do that, though? I don't know. Yeah, but you watched, like, The Night of the Living Dead one, it's like, you could tell, like, this is very uh, unnatural looking. Like, yeah, it's hard telling. They must have just uh, put had a big budget, put a lot of money into it. I remember, like, there was talks about, like, when the, the clerk's 10th anniversary was coming around, they were going to colorize it, but they ultimately didn't. It's like, I would like to see a colorized version of Clerks if it was done good. That'd be dog. Why? What was the choice of going black and white with Kevin Smith on that? Was it an artistic choice? It had to have been in the early 90s. Low budget. 
What was it really that was it really that much cheaper to go black and white back then in the early nineties? It was, yeah. That's crazy. Like you don't have to worry about the t- the color, color timing and stuff. Basically, very alpha move on his part. Fucking Adrian Mendoza's East Saint Diabolique is a good movie. I've never seen it. Sounds Chad though, very Chad. I bet it's got a fucking nice Chad jawline. Nice big dick, very high T, tightly circumcised. Not one of those fucking pussy ass loose circumcisions, like the, the, the nice fucking tight one. You can't fucking accidentally fucking, like you can't even jack off with some of that extra skin. See, that's the uh, man's ultimate fucking flaw is like they took our foreskin so we wouldn't jack off as much. Very beta. It didn't work. So uh, I'm just, did I. Did I hear you correctly earlier when you were talking about Wizard of Oz and you were saying they went color with it after the fact? Exactly. Colorized. No, but that's 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 what I'm not that's what I'm not reading here though. Hold on, let me just double check. Yeah, the original version was just black and white. Let me just double check. Fuck it. How do you not know this? Very, well, very I'm, low T. I'm fact checking you. I just want to make sure because I was looking up the year it got changed. See, look, here's our first time meeting Norman. Very fucking, what do you think of Norman? The, the Like I always thought, like I always watch the movies and I'm fucking, I'm rooting for the Norman. I, I want him to do good. Like, oh no, don't fucking, don't go crazy again, Norman. You're fucking, uh, is, you're so close to living a normal life. But it's like he keeps getting pulled down. It's like fucking, it's like that, that corn song. They're just beating him down to the ground. Look at his mom. Bro, I, I think you're wrong. I think it came out in Technicolor. I think you're fucking wrong, Beta. No, go ahead and Google it. It came out. It was filmed in three strip Technicolor and came out in 1939 in Technicolor. That's when the movie came out. Well, Technicolor is uh, colorizing too. So I, I was half right. Technicolor is, uh, I mean, basically, it, 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 uh, I don't know. It just, it's so much part of what makes that movie, that movie, but here's a fun fact. Walt Disney, he refused to allow Alfred Hitchcock to film at Disneyland in the early 1960s because Hitchcock, he, uh, quote unquote, made that disgusting movie psycho. (laughs) Okay. Very beta. And it's so, it's so, mild by today's standard i mean if only walt disney could have looked in a crystal ball just even 30 years later right not even the 50 or 40 years later or 60 years later fuck 60 years now exactly fucking- but you can no, just look at i mean just the next decade you had fucking movies that were way outgrossing and, and disturbing this movie right mm-hmm. so look in my crystal ball it's all right that's an icp song there's also this uh, subplot or like character quirk of uh, Norman where he does the, the fucking taxidermy and he stuffs the birds and people like wonder like, oh, is that like a reference to the birds? Like fucking same directors like, uh, yeah, like uh, I don't think that was in the book, if I remember right. I don't know. I'd have to read the book because, I mean, it sounds like this is as big a change from the source material as something like The Shining. Exactly. Fucking yeah, exactly. Adrian said you can't nibble on the foreskin of socialism with that without that tight circumcision. You need that shit. Okay, you gotta tightly circumcise your kids for Christ. Okay, as we all know. <laughs> so I'm a tightly circumcised uh, man of Christ. What about you, Aaron? Uh, I guess technically, yeah. <laughs> Fucking, you got the tight circumcision. Yeah. Or the loose circumcision. I don't know the difference. I'm very my dick, loose. My dick looks normal. Very loose. Unlike my brother. Unlike one of my brothers, man, who they fucked up. They fucked up and he only got like half a circumcision. That's dank. So, yeah, that's weird. Uh, I have my my cousin Mac. They've accidentally, actually, they fucking uh, completely clipped his entire dick off and had to sew it back on upside down. Oh, that's hilarious. That's funny. He's very beta. So that means his uh his stiffy would be pointing down. Exactly. Interesting. He pisses upward. Why has Mac been such a sad boy online yesterday and today? He's forever sad boy. That's his meme. 
But he seems like he's so happy, and you know, because I know he's got like a new lady and stuff that we all established on a, a live we did. Maybe it's but, all just a fucking front. Maybe he's just pretending to be a sad boy to get all the fucking a pussy in the comments. But he's got pussy. But he's got pussy right now. So like, why would he do that? He needs more pussy. He's a sad boy, and he's making these like he's posting these emo yellow card lyrics or whatever the fuck they are. I don't know. What you, you heard of a MF Doom? Mac is MF Coom. Yeah. Yeah. He's the coomer. <laughs> anyway, and then the people, and he'll be posting sad boy emo band lyrics, and then, you know, somebody will comment, like, man, are you okay, bruh? And he'll be like, no, I'm never okay, bruh. Like, well, I'm here for you, bruh. Thanks, bruh. If you need to talk, bruh. That's that's what you need. You need people to tell you that. Fucking weird. Whenever <laughs> I'm really depressed, I'd never fucking actually try to get people to, like, Try to bait people. Into yeah, fucking- you should. It, it works the opposite. Like, at least for me, like whenever I kind of sink down into a depressive state, I'll shut down for a few days until I just have to work it out of my system. Maybe that's how you can tell that he's fucking he's just doing it for the drip. But you fit the drip. You feel like you would do anything in the world to talk to somebody, but it's the last thing you'll do because you don't want to be a burden. And it just becomes this. Yeah, it's you know, you fight yourself and you just shut down. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm not saying everybody processes shit differently I mean, or, or the same. But anyway, he is forever sad boy. The sad boy. <laughs> fucking uh, MF Coomer. I hope I hope Max. OK, I, I hope he's OK. I hope he's really not like secretly depressed. And it's like a Rob Williams thing. Rob Williams thing. Sorry. And, you know, you can't tell. So you think he's bullshitting. And but he's secretly hurting inside. You know, I don't I don't fucking want to miss any cries from help for help. Why I can't I fucking talk cries for help. Christ for all help. Maybe he's really a sad boy and we need to be uh, there for him. And we need to put it in the comments of Facebook that, hey, we're there for you, bro. So he knows. That is a thing. That is a thing with like uh, people who have ADHD, depression. It comes and goes. Yeah. Like by the day. Because I swear, yeah. man, it's just like. He has ADHD. He has AD. What's it called? Attention deficit disorder. He has so AD- ADHD. Oh, fuck. I can't talk. ADD. He's ADD. He has right? ADD is the joke I was going to make. He has attention deficit disorder, high definition. <laughs> like you can see that shit in 10 and the 1080 P. See, I, I tried to do a joke, but like my brain got all confused. All these fucking letters <laughs> like D and D fucking uh, the FBI YMCA fucking uh, why is it all like this? Here's a fun fact. <laughs> Sir Alfred Hitchcock even had a ca- he had the you know how you can get the the chairs with the director's name and the actor's name. He had a chair with Mrs. Bates written on it back uh you know basically they would take uh you know the promo shots and that was a big thing. He wanted to like create like a big like oh uh, mystique about who's playing Mrs. Bates who like all the whole mystique like there was rumors putting out that he was talking to several actresses and like yeah several actresses actually did audition to play Mrs. Bates because even the actors didn't know the ending script so basically every time you're seeing our boy here Anthony Perkis he doesn't know that he's the the killer because like the ending of the script was always hidden and and no one got to read it until they shot it basically so it's pretty fucking clever how he did it I'm like yeah uh, by the way we never we never brought up the obvious his the fact that Janet Lee the mother of uh Jamie Lee Curtis and all that stuff. But you could see how hairy her arm was there. It was really weird. This is uh, 4K, though. It's actually Dog. doing its thing on a black and white movie. Uh, She's hairy like animal. <laughs> like, Don't you just want to fuck the hair off her arms? Take me, monkey man. Is that exactly. what she says? Return to monkey. No, so Return you know what's funny? Return to monkey. This is an interesting example of a movie that... It's so ingrained in pop culture that, you know, everything about it's so cliche because it's been copied so many times. It's hard to put yourself in the position of somebody that was seeing it for the first time in cinemas in 1960. But, you know, when I watch the movie now, it's like, how did how did everybody not see it coming that he was obviously, you know, his mom and he was hearing this shit in his head. But it's I'm almost brainwashed into thinking that because this this whole fucking gimmick, this whole psycho thing has been out there before I was ever born. It's so part of pop culture now, you know what I mean? But people had to have been really dipped. Like you said, they went to those extents of keeping the last part of the script from, from the cast and shit. 
I mean, if they tried doing that today and they were making this movie for the first time in 2021 and they decided to hide the script and I was Norman Bates, I'd be like, well, clearly I'm the fucking psycho, dude. Just give me the last few pages. Like, fuck, quit fucking with me. But back then, it would never been done before, so it really probably was a big shock. Exactly. Fucking movies like this came out. They fucking de- de- defy the de- define the genre. Fucking make you think of things differently to where you can't undo that. You can't put the fucking genie back in the bottle. Now we're always looking for that fucking psycho ending. We're always looking for the sixth sense ending. You can't do it anymore. You basically have to fucking subvert their attention, think they're going to get the psycho ending, and then take it back. Like, no, you don't get the psycho ending. That's the only way to do the psycho ending now is to do the opposite. Do you think the psycho ending and just what the psycho did and what it inspired and because it has become cliche now, do you think that cheapens psycho as a whole or do you think that strengthens it and almost makes it royalty because it started it? You know what I mean? Makes it royalty, babe. It's like, uh, you know, you talk about heavy metal music and Tony Iommi being the grandfather of heavy metal and the riff and all that stuff. Uh, So... A lot of people will credit something like Symptom of the Universe being the greatest heavy metal riff of all time. It'll never be topped. Have you heard that riff? Um, I probably heard it. I just don't know it by okay. the name. Anyway, if you hear that now, if anybody that wasn't privy to Black Sabbath heard that riff now, they'd be like, that's the most generic fucking thing I've ever heard. But there's a reason why it's generic. So all it is, it's pedaling that low E open note, right? And... You know, partnering with the past. It's dun 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 dun. That's it. That's it. That is the fucking riff. It's the simple epic. But nobody did shit like that back then. And and uh, so yeah, it's kind of hard to. And I'm on I'm on the side of the fence. It's like no, it's fucking brilliant. But. Fucking, uh, I kept thinking she was eating a Pop-Tart. I was like, fucking Pop-Tarts sound good right now. But it's a bread. It's a piece of bread. It's a stupid bread. It's a stupid bread. Bread is stupid. Bread is fucking donk and stupid at the same time. I love bread, man. Especially when I'm like really on my shit eating healthy. I love eating dry toast. I like toast, man. It's good. And I'll throw like a fried egg on it. Make like a fried egg sandwich. I thought bread was very unhealthy. No, I mean it, everything in moderation. But what kind of bread you eat? I eat. I eat whole. I Remember tr- the food pyramid? Remember how fucking bullshit that was? Yeah, total bullshit. <laughs> like you want us to have all these carbs? Exactly. Like uh, basically, like yo, you eat the food pyramid. It's all fucking good. Like you know that happened because like fucking like you know lobbyists were fucking like paying money to like fucking the government and shit. Like oh, put this shit in there in the textbooks. They don't teach that shit anymore. Yeah, they were teaching it when I was in school, so I don't know when they stopped, but exactly. um, the food pyramid maybe applies to athletes, you know, if you want to throw in all those fucking grains and carbs and shit, but and I think it encompassed like the biggest part of the pyramid, right? I don't remember the order of the pyramid and, and you know, but I think it was the, the, the bottom part of the big fatty. Bread. I think bread was on top, wasn't it? I don't remember, but uh, I think, uh, no, man, dude, I mean, a little bread's fine. I don't give a shit. Uh, and I, I'm active, so it's fine. And I try and eat not shit bread. I don't buy cheap, shitty bread. You get, you get that, uh, bourgeois bread, the bourgeois brand. Nah, I, I get the, uh, the, the light honey wheat. Yeah. Stuff like that. Light honey wheat. Honey wheat. Wheat. Here's a fun fact. Uh, with the uh, the Halloween connection, this is another movie that uh, after it was done, he uh you know he got the finished copy, he, you know the test screening and everything. He watched it and he thought, man, I failed. This movie's shit. And then like uh, basically, he gave it to Bernard Herman, the, the guy who did the score, and the score made the movie just like with Halloween. It elevated it exactly. I I mean Bernard Herman, he's the he's the fucking man. He's the fucking the uh, fucking the Twilight Zone, fucking uh, amazing, amazing. Yeah, if you if you imagine watching this movie without any of that music, especially all the lead ups right to the ending, because the movie's a lot of dialogue, right? It's a lot of dialogue. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of really slow shit going on until you get to the ending. Uh, and if but just having like her driving to fucking California in the middle of broad daylight. There's nothing really scary about that, but 
it's playing that fucking psycho thing. It's creating that sense of urgency that you need to stay engaged in the movie. Otherwise, you would be, you know, checking your iPhones back in 1960 and, you know, fucking getting ahead in the movie theater. That was kind of the pacing of movies altogether back then, too, though. It was a lot more talk and dialogue driven, baby. Well, they didn't have they can't they weren't doing explosions and, and expensive car mm-hmm. chases and shit and they didn't have a T one thousands and stuff to do CGI and here's a fun fact about the toilet. Uh Joseph Stefano was adamant about seeing a toilet on screen to, to display realism. He also wanted to see it flush. Alfred Hitchcock told him uh <laughs> he also wanted someone to lay a fucking shit in there and flush. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock told him he had to make it so through his writing, if he wanted it to happen in the movie and not be cut out, uh, basically S- Stefano wrote the scene in which Marion adds up the money, then flushes the paper down the toilet, specifically so that the toilet flushing was integral to the scene and therefore couldn't be removed. So basically, uh, yeah, they fucking they had to keep the scene in. Fucking uh, smart, very alpha, very alpha. Do you think? Uh... Do you? Uh, yeah, I wonder if that's even written in a way that they even couldn't alter it because she had to get rid of that. She had to get rid of the money. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if uh, I wonder if he thought when he decided to to input that realistic that realism symbol of toilet that he was going to be a trailblazer and uh, you know thirty forty years later people would be sending each other videos of them taking shits in the toilet with their exactly. phones. Exactly. Fucking very, very much so. He's I had a boss. I had a boss when I worked at a restaurant about 10 years ago that uh, sent me a, a message and it was hit for him in the employee bathroom. And it was like, it was weird. Was like, what am I looking at? It looks like a, a solar eclipse. And then all, and it turns out it was like ass cheeks and they don't lift in. You can see like a toilet, some light. And all of a sudden a big fucking shit comes out of an asshole. I'm like, what the fuck? Sex. Like, you think this is what yeah, all these, do you think this is what fucking Nikolai or sorry, Tesla envisioned? All these great inventors. We're gonna use we're gonna use all this great technology so that we can Yeah, he ended up losing his mind towards the end, so he might have actually pictured that. I mean, you think Alexander Graham Bell envisioned when he made the phone that someday people were gonna send each other dick pics and scat porn with this? Uh they, that would have made him do it even earlier in his life, I think. He would have been I, fucking figuring that out in the in the womb. I guess you could always uh See, here's the first glimpse we get that fucking Norman is a, he's a fiend. He's one of us. <laughs> fucking, he's looking through the hole, watching her get undressed, dude. Do you think he would watch her take a shit? And that's what he was really, that's why, I mean, do you think it's just for shower purposes? Or do you think he wants to, you think he's into that? I think he's into that fucking scat scat. You can hear him jerking off. Now that was me doing that I, with my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> that was really fucking weird the way you said it. it was creepy see that was uh whenever they redid the movie with the, the gus van zant they had him jacking off and then whenever they did the base motel series they had him jacking off so it must have been one of those things like we we wanted to have him jacking off but we couldn't do it back then were you doing were you pulling your cheek to make that effect i was no i just stood up and started jacking off into the mic actually Okay. You got to make sure there's a lot of spit. <laughs> hey, RIP that house. Legendary. Is it not standing anymore? I thought it was. I thought I read that it was demolished. Is that not the case? I heard that they were thinking about it and there was like a petition to save the psycho house. I don't know if they did or not, but basically it's really run down and they haven't been taking care of it. The one that's actually in the, the, the lot is like. It's basically just a shell of the house made to like be a duplicate because like they took the real one to like the uh, the uh, fucking the, the Universal Studios. So the one that was on location, they put like a replica on the, there. And that's the one that's like really fucked up. They did like uh, an episode of Fear Factor where they were inside the replica house. Here we go. Well, as of uh, 2017, this article I'm, I'm reading on Joe Blow. Although the classic Psycho House and Motel exteriors still stand at Universal Studios Hollywood, uh, they were not used as a filming location for the A&E television series Bait Motel. Bait Motel. Instead, for the last five years, a replica of the house and motel. Well, I knew this, but at least of, uh, as of 2017, 
it was still standing the exteriors. And that means I had to have seen it, but I don't remember it. I've been to Universal Studios, right? And I've taken those tours. I don't know. Is it the California or the Orlando one that it's at? I'm not sure. It's Hollywood. It's in Hollywood. All right. I don't think they had Universal Studio. They didn't have it in Hollywood way back when. I don't. And sorry, in Orlando. Pretty sure. We just saw her flush the fucking paper, and then she immediately gets in the shower. See, see that uh, that shower scene where it's shooting right at the camera? That was a giant shower head they made just for the movie, so that it was. So uh, this is pretty nuts too. Th- this was a huge deal as well because talk about a total bait and switch red herring. The fact that they kill her, mm-hmm. right? They kill her in the fucking middle of the movie. We are forty eight minutes. We got an hour left of this movie, and they kill her. Exactly. And she was the name. She was the the big marquee at the time for this movie, right? It was her. That was the reason he didn't want people coming in late and seeing that she wasn't in the movie. And then, like, you know, getting in the press and shit. Apparently for this scene, they, they had a stand Somebody in. else. Yeah. Because they didn't want, again, they didn't want any of the actors knowing who the killer was. Yeah, so, because you could kind of see some glimpses. Mm-hmm. And did they get a woman to do it? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know much about who the stand-in is, but the, the there is some information on the girl who plays some of the nude scenes uh, where you can't see the face of the act. That was a stand-in, and it was like a, a girl who was, uh, she was one of the first Playboy Playmates, and uh, she was like a stripper or something. I'll get to a trivia about her uh, at some point here. And was that the entire reason why they didn't get Anthony Perkins to play the sh- because of that? Just to f- do people? It had nothing to do with like s- conflicts, scheduling conflicts. It was apparently all not. For the per- apparently not. Like it was either that or like they didn't want anybody to recognize his stature or something, something like that. I because I always felt because uh, I it's obvious it's not him. I didn't really know the reasonings behind it, but I but it's obvious it's not him. And I always felt, man, what a bummer for Anthony Perkins, if it was down to some kind of scheduling thing that your most iconic role and you actually didn't participate in the most iconic scene. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, I don't really, I don't know. I don't think of that as like the iconic scene to find like like the character. Like, yeah, it defines the movie, but like, yeah, that's gotta be the most iconic scene in the movie that the E E E in the shower and stuff. Uh, When I think of Norman Bates, I think of him fucking talking and and being like charming. I don't think of that scene. I don't know why, but you, but you can't argue. That's not, that's the most iconic. That's the scene. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that's never seen the movie. Yeah. It's the one they spoof and everything. And the, that shot where they uh, zoom out of her eye. Apparently they did all that like practically, but I don't, I don't know if it like, I might have like fucked up, but like I want to say that they they made it a still frame, and then zoomed out of it digitally because they wanted like they noticed while they were watching it that her you could see her pulse, so they mm-hmm. they had to change it and make it a still frame the last moment. But, like yeah, apparently uh, Hitchcock got a lot of letters from like people that like eye doctors and shit saying like oh like that would have been better if you used this uh th- these eye drops that make your pupil dilate cuz when you die your pupils dilate and they're like that's the only thing that took me out of the movie it was real up until that scene and then apparently after that he started doing that in all of his movies sorry to disappoint the the eye doctor demographic i mean i'm sure it hurt him real bad exactly exactly eye doctors don't matter all doctors matter no, I, I fuck eye doctors. I'm kidding. You know, what's funny, though, is I was I was actually thinking about this sort of concept the other day when I was watching a movie. And I'm like, if you were a real life cop, that was your day job. You know, I know me. I don't want when I'm off work. I don't want to fucking think about work. And when I used to work in hospitality and I'd work at a restaurant like I don't want to. I don't want to, I don't want to watch movies when I was working at a restaurant. I didn't want to watch a movie like waiting. Like I live this every day. Why do I want to watch this shit? So my question is, if you're a cop, do you just feel alienated out of all the fucking movies that come out where it's about crime and cops? Yeah. Like, do you not want, do you, or do you pick it apart all the time? Like, this is not what my fucking job's like. It's probably more interesting. The movies are probably more interesting. Like, oh, things that happen over a period of like 30 minutes would take like eight months. So, like, if anything, it'd be like, this makes my job look even more exciting. Like, why Why isn't he doing all the paperwork? What happened? Exactly. He, should, he should be doing paperwork. 
Yeah. You know, I, but like in the movies, though, the cops are always very rogue style. They kind of make their own rules. They say, fuck you, Captain. Exactly. I'm going to get this son of a bitch. It's mine. And then the captain doesn't say, oh, yeah, well, you're fired. No, he's like, give me your badges. And he always gives back the badges. You, everybody's, anybody that became a cop decided to become a cop and join the force based off watching shit like Lethal Weapon, they were they must have been in for a rude awakening, man. Because in that movie, you know, Riggs, Lethal Weapon 2, man, he fucking, it's personal, right? He finds out the South Africans, they killed his wife and they killed his new girlfriend, and it's personal. He's not a, remember he calls Roger, I'm not a cop tonight, Rog. He got rid of his badge, he's like, it's, and he's like, I'm going to go there, I'm going to fuck him. And and same thing, Murtaugh joins him, he puts his bag and badge in the drawer and goes with them, and they just kill they kill, they infiltrate this entire fucking headquarters house of all these South African diplomats that are, you know, running fucking, you know, running crime and shit. And they murder them all. They murder them all straight up. And it's so funny. They don't, they, nothing happens. It's fine. Trade the van for it straight up. <laughs> what does he say? Get 15 miles a gallon of this hog. Exactly. See, that's a classic we haven't done. We haven't done any of the sequels, though, either. So we can't do it this month. <laughs> I'm telling you, we technically could squeeze out enough to do a Dumb and Dumber exploitation because we got Dumb and Dumber, Dumb and Dumber, er, we got Dumb and Dumber 2. Um, I, I mean, I know we could always do a cinema enema, but I don't know what we do that for, but we could do the fucking animated series. The whole series? I'm pretty sure it probably had like two episodes. Huh? The whole series? Uh, how many episodes did it last? Probably like six, at least. Probably wouldn't take that long. But I'm saying technically, I think we'd have enough juice to to make it exploitation. Exactly. There he is wiping up all that cum that he just shot. Fucking the, his cum brain all over. Fucking, fucking the dang shit. See, I, 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 I noticed, did you notice I fucking found that new, the, the, the emojis? I put the milk glass and then the brain for cum brain. Uh, like that's dang that needs to become a meme yeah i did and i saw how did you get those how how did you make those emojis of our faces and why did you pick the most unflattering fucking picture you've ever taken of me because that's that fucking the doofy face that you make was, whenever whenever someone donates money on our live streams and if it does the spongebob yee manoye that's fucking <laughs> dank shit what i make that face every time someone does that this is the doodle bob face exactly okay <laughs> but how did you make those fucking very carefully oh yeah mendoza sharing it exactly <laughs> dude it's so fucking cringe i want to take it off it's so sex it's fucking amazing that's fucking coomer that's like cum inducing it really is like a coomer meme like it coomer. is <laughs> the coomer tay mf coom <laughs> amazing shit it's so fun but how do you make those i mean not to sound like a boomer uh, uh very carefully uh i do I, I just make a i just cut out around your head on photoshop we gotta make more though that's so fucking awesome i didn't even know you could make that we gotta ask the people if they want more uh custom fucking emojis revival emojis exactly i think they're fucking hilarious man Maybe we should make that a pa a Patreon perk. We'll make emojis out of out of like the star the star patrons the star listeners. I'll take a picture of my dick and put a mustache and monocle on it <laughs> for an emote. Yeah, that's all right. It'd be donk. Make it look like Mr. Peanut. That's funny. Here's a fun fact: yeah, the Lush did that. I told you that when the Lush. Oh yeah, of course. Made Mendoza wants that. The Lush did that. I told you that way back in the day when we first. Uh, we had the Facebook page going and stuff. This was in the early days of BTM. And uh, luckily I caught it, but I got an alert probably on my Samsung or whatever the fuck I was rocking at the time. And that Lush posted on, there was a post from the BTM. And it was a picture of fucking Lush's fucking dick. And he put a pair of glasses on it and drew like a smiley face on his thighs. And it was his fucking cock. His erect cock. <laughs> And I fucking, I was an admin, so I fucking deleted it before anybody saw it, like the second it popped up. And I, I fucking chewed his ass. I'm like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? We got kids on here, man. Did you save it first? No, I didn't save it. I deleted it. And his, yeah. his response was, oh, we're an adult website. Like, what are you talking? Like, it's not my fault there's kids on there. I'm like, first of all, we're not an adult website. What the fuck are you talking about? 
Like <laughs> just because you're a sleaze hound in your life all the time doesn't mean everything you do has to be sleazy. <laughs> it was like, and I don't know, I, this wasn't, Facebook was established. You still couldn't post fucking cock pictures. Normalize showing cock faces to children. Hashtag. What did it look like? Uh, Mendoza wants, it to, wait, are you talking about the lush cock? It wasn't impressive, dude. I don't think you would be pleased. Seven inches at least. <laughs> I don't fucking know. So funny. Here's a fun fact. Anthony Perkins and Janet Lee said they did not mind being stereotyped forever because of their particular uh, roles in this movie. They said in interviews they would rather be stereotyped and be remembered forever for the classic movie than not be remembered at all. Hell yeah. Well, you could argue that the greatest blessing was their greatest curse was also their greatest blessing. So a movie like Psycho, yeah. He was sort of typecast and he peaked early and this is what everybody remembers him for. But I mean, this movie is so iconic to where how could anything even compare to it anyway? And most actors that have long careers, a lot of them don't hit movies this high. They don't Mm -hmm. have movies this big, even if they have a lot of like good movies, they don't have that one fucking stellar movie. So if you get that one fucking stellar movie and it's at the cost of not having a whole bunch of okay movies, you know, I mean, I don't know, dude, fucking this movie's at Universal Studio. You can sh- you could see the fucking uh, set pieces. You can see all that shit. Everybody knows the theme. Everybody knows Norma Bates. You could say the name Norma Bates. You know who it is. And people know who Anthony Perkins is. I would I would argue when you say Anthony Perkins, it's not like you're like who I think most people, unless you're, you know, a fucking, you know, unless you're 10 years old, you know, who Anthony Perkins is. Unless you're a zoomer. A Zoomer. The Zoomer Fox. The Zoomer generation fuckers. It's this, it's the same thing. It's my argument with someone like George Romero. I, I think, you know, I mean, he didn't have, he didn't strike lightning a lot. He had Night of the Living Dead. He had Dawn of the Dead. And those were his biggies. But you know what? Day of the Dead. Whatever. The Dead series. Dude, everybody, anybody would kill to have, Martin. To have had that on their resume. Martin's not good. Money I don't, shines. I, I don't, okay, keep going. Why don't you dig it? Dig that grave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Monkey shines, baby. Monkey shines is amazing. Fell. Well, I guess you have things like Creep Show and stuff like that. He had other. He had. He had a few other good things, right? But the thing he takes to the bank at the end of the day is that Dead series and him being the Godfather of of the modern zombie and stuff Bruiser. like that. Okay. Somebody, uh, somebody recommended we do a monkey exploitation. We could do the MVP. Most valuable primate. Dunstan checks in. Dunstan checks in, man. They got MVP. They got MVP Extreme, where he does like the snowboarding, the extreme sports, dude. Mm-hmm. Ed. Uh, Ed, fuck that with Matt. Matt LeBlanc. Amazing. Here's a fun fact. The original trailer for this movie. You ever seen it? Mighty Joe Young. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. The original trailer for this movie from 1960 ran on for over six minutes and 30 seconds, a feat unheard of in today's uh, trailers. You remember the trailer for this movie? No, because I wasn't around. Well, you can see it still. It's like uh, basically it came out while he was doing his show, Alfred Hitchcock Presents. So it kind of had that motique about it. It was doing the... Did he present thing. it in the trailer? He he was yeah he was on it he was like this is where uh, the, the hotel something crazy happened here he's like walking around giving a little tour of the hotel and then at the end of it he opens up the shower curtain and then the the lady screams and it says psycho uh, actually uh, Janet Lee couldn't come back and shoot that so uh, they got this chick right here playing Marion Crane to play her and they made the the psycho font come up on the face like right right away so you couldn't tell that it was a different person yeah like that was the the trailer and like back whenever remember when i told you like at first he thought like man i really fucked up this movie isn't good he was thinking about re-editing it to like an hour long uh, episode of a show until uh the the he watched it with the music on there Cool. Very, very uh, alpha. So Bernard Herman made this movie. Uh, fucking, he saved it, baby. And a lot of it, he went on to do the Twilight Zone. And a lot of people in this movie uh, appeared on the Twilight Zone throughout its run, the original. 
did Janet Lee appear? Twilight Zone? No, not Janet Lee. Too big? Probably, yeah. There was a lot of big ones, though. Like, uh, it was kind of a, a perfect show for, like, people who wanted, uh, like, prime time, like, fucking the big stars to get in on. But the, just some people didn't go to TV or didn't want to do TV, maybe. I don't know. That was pretty cool. Like I said, I'm watching the, the UHD 4K version, and I can see the pits in that fucking dude's faces, that face walking in. Yeah, apparently uh, Hitchcock didn't like this guy's portrayal. Like he wanted to recast uh, this guy. Apparently, he, he referred to him as the stiff. I never thought he was. Uh, I, mean, too, I never thought he was bad. I think he does the job. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess he's not the most memorable part of the flick, but he doesn't need to be. He's a private investigator. So probably early into filming it's like hey before we get too deep in this can we marty mcfly this fucking guy can we can we get eric stoltz yeah. out of here and just get a new guy i always thought a private investigator would be a sweet dank ass job it's fucking mm-hmm. get get paid to be a stalker that'd be donk like oh you got some hoe you want me to find she went off the grid she don't have facebook i'll find her for you You just fucking follow her around fucking oh like a man or woman doesn't even matter just fucking that i get paid to fucking watch people that's donk so zach i'm gonna pay you a thousand dollars a day to go stalk emma roberts and tell me what she eats hell yeah what time she has a bowel movement Hell yes. Uh, Tell me who she blows and when she does the blowing. Does she spit? Does she swallow? Amazing. Is she? Does she had a kid? I want to see some titty titty feeding shots. Exactly. I'd ball in on it. Yeah, he's referring to a conversation in the the fucking uh, the uh, Discord. Uh, I I posted a picture of her. She put, oh yeah, almost thirty. I'm like, "Uh, my girl. She's too old for me now. Lame. Just kidding. She did have a kid recently, though, which is gross. That's what I, I put. And it was funny, but they just kept talking about fucking uh, Walking Dead and shit uh, while I was trying to talk about something important. No, some somebody brought it up once and I responded, you know. I mean, that's, exactly. that's fair. Exactly. It wasn't fair. Fucking Emma Roberts is on screen. Coomer, <laughs> Coomer posting over here. Coomer post. Dude, she fucking did Hotel for Dogs. Hey, it says Candy Corn, like the band. Ooh, not, ooh, not, 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 not. It's got K's. Did it really? Yeah, it was Candy Corn with two K's. Candy with a K, like combat, Mortal Kombat style. And it's got corn, K-O-R-N on it. You think that's yeah. where the band got it? <laughs> that could have been where they got it from. Who knows? Look at it. See if you can see it again. He, when he was sitting down eating it, it showed up clear as day. Do you see it now? Yeah. Candy Corn. They, uh, there was a TV uh, station named Corn with a K on that movie. Uh, fucking, uh, what's it called? Uh, that me and Mac did. The fucking uh, the Willies with our boy Sean Aston. What was it K O R N? K O R N, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. And it had uh, with with the, the Willie. You mean it's got our boy Michael Bauer? It does, yeah. Sean Aston's yeah. in it too, though. I've never watched the Willies, man. Beta. Beta, directed by a uh, confirmed uh, Plato file. Gross. We need we need to have confirmed Plato file director exploitation. Have Victor Salva fucking do the creeper, the fucking uh, do the willies, all that shit. The fucking uh, convicted Plato files. They do good shit. You can't. You gotta admit they make great films. Fucking uh, Ron Polanski. <sighs> Ron Polanski. Yeah. Yeah, it is weird how there's like. Uh, Do you have to f- kids to be a good director? I wonder. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I think I think See, you that's, just that's gonna require a beep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just kind of did away with your whole point of saying Plato file when you say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. the joke was needed though. Fucking the timing was impeccable. <laughs> the delivery was impeccable. The delivery yeah, it is- flawless. It is funny how people are pretty selective on who they um, who they shun and cancel with that stuff because, you know, me, I, I don't want to give Victor Salva the time of day, but have I watched a Roman Polanski movie? I want to swap saliva with Victor Salva. But, but I have watched a Roman Polanski movie. I'm like, you know what? I guess I guess it's not, I don't know. Is it, is it, it's not different. Why, why do we think that way? But Yeah, like I, you can think he's a fucking bad person, but still uh, like the movies, I think. 
You gotta separate. You can separate it. the the art you gotta from keep the it act. Separated exactly. If it wasn't him directing it, it would have been some other fucking guy that could have <sighs> kids too. <sighs> More bleeps. <Anyway. laughs> My bad. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you know what's funny though? So for anybody that is gonna join us on on Patreon or and, and listen to these live recording or these recordings as we do them. You're going to hear everything pre bleeped and you're going to note, you're going to hear all the stuff that maybe we have to leave on the cutting room floor because sometimes shit is said that, uh, you know, just can't. It's too hot for TV. Too hot for TV. It won't ever make it. Or something has to get cut out because the movie stops working and we got to resync or something. Yeah. Here, that that shot right there, that shot right there. They, uh, that that's one thing. Like uh, they did, uh, fucking, um, whenever they uh, redid the movie or they remade it with fucking Vince Vaughn, Vince Vaughn. They fucking had him eating. Like uh, I don't remember if he was eating anything, but like that was something that was improvised by our boy. Like he fucking he has like a thing like oh he's candy corn or something something a kid would do because he's he's got the mom thing. And then uh, whenever they did the the series, they fucking uh, they reprised uh, the scene where uh, you know Marion Crane dies in the last season and the guy comes and they they redo that shot and like. If you're a fucking uh, a virgin Chad like me, I'm the virgin Chad. Uh, I noticed that shot, but this is one of my favorite movies, so it makes sense for me to notice it. Yeah. Hey. Uh. So good. Good comment. I'm gonna read this comment right now in the Discord. But Mendoza says I'm gonna listen to Marilyn Manson still. So that's a good point. I mean, to each their own. I never liked Marilyn Manson, so it's not really a point of conflict for me. I mean, I'll just. Eat. Still not listen to his music. Evan but, Rachel Wood is a babe these days. Pure Chad. What's your opinion on the Marilyn Manson thing? I get it. yet it's yet another accusation, and everybody's canceling him with just with his words. But you have a lot of you have a lot of people, men included, dogpiling on him, right? People like Trent Reznor, uh, West Borland did too, right? West Borland was in Marilyn Manson's band for I think a year. Or something, maybe a couple yeah. years. See, I, I, I assume like, yeah, I've always kind of heard stories and assumed he was an asshole. I never like cared about him at all. Like, I like some of his songs, yeah, but like, yeah, it's another one of those things. Like, I never, I don't really have to like the person. To, to so, like uh, the w- stuff they do. West West Borland just came out and he said everything that they're saying right now in the media is fucking true. That's all he said. The guy is fucking. He was on a podcast, like doing a live Zoom type thing, and he said it's fucking true. And you know he was he in the band. The, he he collected Nazi memorabilia. He's probably a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Didn't he buy the skeleton of a Chinese girl, like a Chinese child? Uh, something. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Well, and then Trent Reznor, he uh, he said, "Look, I've been preaching my disdain for him as a character, as a person, for years now." He's like, "I haven't talked to him in fucking over twenty years." He said he cut him off like twenty two, twenty three years ago, and I know that he produced his first two albums right but like i guess the big thing was when marilyn manson in the late 90s i think it was probably around 98 when did he release his biography it's a long hard road out of hell or whatever it was Mm -hmm. there was a story he put in there he says trent Reznor and i were hanging out and he basically said that we uh he says this in the book that we assault, we sexually assaulted a girl together, and then it was the next day that he offered me a record deal. Fucking amazing! Like you know, like they, like they had a bonding experience. They assault, they sexually assaulted a girl together, and uh, you know he's move. he's he's denounced it. He's denounced that story, and you know basically said, look, that that story was offensive back then. It's still offensive now. It fucking never happened. He's a piece of shit. So I don't fucking know. I know that Trent Reznor is basically, yeah, he's, he's been like, oh, he, like, uh, they haven't liked each other for a while. So, like, yeah, it's possible, like, oh, he's he's got dirt on me. I'll fucking, uh, I'll, uh, you know, fucking, I'll put dirt out on him before he can fucking do it to me. Who knows? I wonder if all of our parents are rejoicing right now for being right about listening to Marilyn Manson's music in the 90s. <laughs> Isn't that funny though? Everybody's like, that guy is the devil. And like, like, oh, he really did turn out to be pretty bad. <laughs> like, and now he's, and now it's the people that grew up in the generation of kids that listen to Marilyn Manson that are canceling him. Exactly. It's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. 
Now, I didn't know all the history behind it. Zach's taking a piss in a cup. I didn't know all the history about it until I read up on it. But, you know, when I saw the comments of Evan Rachel Wood come out, it just kind of sounded like she was accusing him of being verbally abusive. And I'm like, that's what we're canceling people are over? I mean, I get it. That sucks. But you, you, you got you got out of that relationship. That's kind of what you do when you're with abusive assholes or dicks. But because she, no one's ever really came out clear about it. But is it a sexual thing? Was he physically beating the shit out of her? Was he subjecting her to like weird kinky sex stuff? I, I mean, they don't really say. Uh, I, I'd assume it'd have to be. Yeah. People aren't really can't. People are canceling him without any real context. Like, oh, well, what are we accusing him of? <laughs> That's funny. Whatever. Here's our boy. Fucking, uh, he's, he's, he's solving the crime. He's fucking getting in on it. He's going to find out. Fucking, uh, Marion Crane, baby. He's going to find that. He's a good, uh, private investigator. Uh, Unlike me, I would be a terrible one. uh, I'd probably just take people's money and, like, buy a bunch of Coke and just hang out and fucking try to, like, uh, get Corey Feldman to break his sobriety and shit. Corey Feldman was on the bandwagon of dog pile and he posted a picture <laughs> with Marilyn. Yeah. Corey Feldman posted a picture of him hanging out with Marilyn Manson backstage. He was like, yeah. So it, like right away you see that and you think, holy shit, did Marilyn Manson try to fuck Corey Feldman? <laughs> but then you read it. It's like, he tried to get me to break my sobriety. And, uh, well, it, it even like the start of his caption seems like that's where it's going too. He's like, he's like the, he abused me. He he, uh, you know, it's like oh, why he's using all these words that I- insinuate that he got fucked. But then it's like, no, he means he abused by he tried to get me to break my sobriety, and you know, he's like so. He was I don't just know, to- like I, I'm sure if you meet old friends, they they pr- they they probably do the same thing. You just got to say no, and like, yeah, like I don't know if if I would. Uh, call that like that's d- bad i i gotta admit Corey feldman he really he just comes off like an exploitive motherfucker like he's hopping on this bandwagon to get his weird message out there again you know what i mean he's just yeah that's what i thought it. yeah he comes off that way because he i don't know man you're looking at this picture and it looks like he's got a big shit eating grin on his face holding up the peace sign yeah I, like, I would hope he's not like that but like yeah you you can't help but feel like that whenever he shows up. I'm going to read. Can I read it? Can I read his caption? So if you, you guys follow him, C dog 22, uh, he posts a picture of him. Is is, uh, is, is his comment all in all caps? It, it is all cap. No, he actually, it's, it's actually extra confusing because a lot of it is. And some of it isn't, which fucking hurts my eyes worse but yeah he's so weird and he uses a lot of this isn't twitter why does he like do a lot of abbreviations and uses the number two instead of the word two Uh, like (laughs) yeah it's really you're not hip dude but anyway i'm gonna read this and so on his uh instagram cdog22 if you guys want to follow he does have really awesome like stories and live stories and live streams they're fucking hilarious like i said i watched the man come undone on a live stream one day i thought you were gonna say you watched him come i wasn't fucking jealous <laughs> i watch i watch him come on a live stream Amazing. i couldn't take my eyes off of it uh anyway like that's what charlie sheen had no he wasn't the one i don't know whoever exactly. yeah it was the wrong wrong Corey. but anyway he says like i said he's, he's got a picture here He's cuddled up with Marilyn Manson like they're BFFs. He's got a shit and grin on his face, and he's holding up a peace sign while they're like head to head snuggling. And he writes, The night Marilyn Manson tried to use and abuse me as his play toy by trying to manipulate me into breaking my five years of sobriety to snort cocaine with him while gaslighting me for his press tour on mechanical animals was where the decades long mental and emotional abuse began. I don't know if I'm doing. I'm actually doing more of my Dave Mustaine impression. You, you gotta, you gotta like. You never know if when people use the term gaslighting, they seem to use it in like wrong. improperly a lot. Yeah. So he could have just been like, "Oh, like uh, yeah, uh, you don't do you don't do blow anymore." <laughs> Sounds like you went along with it, my friend. If he was gaslighting you successfully, yeah. you gave or something. Yeah. Like, like did he just say like, "Oh, uh, you don't do this anymore"? It's like, "Oh no, I didn't know you were sober, man." Okay. Like, is that gaslighting? Like, gaslighting would be like, what are you talking about? You've never been sober. Like, trying to make you think that you're going crazy. Like, like lying to you. Like, no, this is how it's always been. Fucking, we, we, we were just doing coke the other day. Like, you haven't been sober. <laughs> what? 
I'm going to read the rest of it. I'm not going to do the voice anymore because that's hurt my throat. He said, luckily, I was not physically harmed that night as we got out safely, but that was just the beginning of my nightmare. Hashtag, I stand with Evan. And any and all survivors of his demented abuse. Wait, so what is his claim here that he offered him dope and then he got out okay and nothing happened? Yeah, like, I wouldn't I wouldn't put that on the same level. Yeah, like what? So he offered- well, I stand with Evan too because she's a bub. Wait, so you he offered you, I mean, I get it. I'm not calling him a liar necessarily, but it easily could have been he offered you dope and then you said no and then you left unscathed, a.k.a. you left the party and didn't partake. I mean, like you go to any party and yeah, you're always going to have those friends. Dude, my whole life, I'm not a recovering alcoholic or drug user. This is a really cool shot. It looks very, uh, I don't know. It looks like you're falling. Like it's, it's almost like a 3D effect. Dreamy, yeah. But... I actually, yeah, anyway, I mean, I, I actually, uh, real quick, I remember when I watched the uh, remake to that, they actually, like, I remember uh, they were shooting this scene of that. They were like, oh, yeah, we're going to shoot it just like the original. Because every shot is just like the original. It's like, why'd you do this? It's almost like there was no point in making this movie. But anyway, they were watching, they were, they were basically explaining to the actor playing the new guy how he was supposed to fall. And they were like, yeah, just do it like the." And they were having trouble explaining it. So at one point, they just went, oh, fuck it, just bust out the DVD. We'll show him. And they actually show the scene to him and like do what he does. It's like this is filmmaking, I guess. <laughs> Bro, I'm I'm reading the rest of this this caption here, and it he uses a lot of like he's he's taken his situation of being offered drugs, but all the words he's using to describe that horrific night is all sexual. So it, it's really gotten me confused. I don't know if he's using these types of words to up the drama of it or what. But let me let me re- read the rest of it. He basically says, uh, let's see, Manson has been obsessed with me for over two decades. Don't believe me? He goes, don't hashtag believe me. Like, why is believe hashtag? Uh, Just, I don't think he knows how to use social media. Just look at the published facts. He first wrote several passages about me in his book, hashtag long long road out of hell. Let's hashtag the book that he he slandered you in. That's great. Um, As we had met a few months prior to that and uh, at a premiere for the Howard Stern movie, Private Parts, which he also hashtagged Howard Stern private in, in New York, where the grooming hashtag grooming, by the way, this is fucking hurting my eyes. Hashtag grooming <laughs> where the grooming process began. What he groomed him for what offering him drugs someday. <laughs> someday he would offer him drugs. Try to break his sobriety. Yeah. Like, like grooming is sexual. Anyway, he says he grabbed my face in front of the crowd and kissed me with his black lipstick that I couldn't rub off all night. He proceeded to gush over me, telling me what a huge fan of mine he was. He then introduced me to his BFF hashtag Billy Corgan. All of his, all of this is documented in his book. He sounds like a dude that gave you a smooch and hooked you and gave you a cool connection, man. That fucking, that fucking bald dude who sings that tonight. Like uh, so far, this doesn't sound too bad. So far, uh, he he set this up by saying he's obsessed with them, and this yeah. this is like his evidence. Like he he uh, he kissed me on stage once, the shock rocker. He kissed me on stage, and he hooked me up with another rock star. <laughs> he, <you know? laughs> he wrote about me in his book, which someone would do if they were talking about like celebrities they knew. <laughs> well, what else did he did to show that he's obsessed with Corey Feldman? He he introduced him to Billy Corgan. The fuck, I mean, I'd be offended too if you put me in Billy Corgan's presence because I hate his music. But <sighs> but still, the nerve was it really Billy Corgan or was it a shapeshifter looking like Billy Corgan? <laughs> yeah, I, do, I don't know. Um, I anyway, know. he says uh, uh, it's all documented in his book. He brags about it as if it was a uh, as if I was a special needs person. He was making fun of. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That's kind of what funny. I, <laughs> okay. Why, why I mean, would that be how you brag about something? I guess, I guess that's how he interprets the text when yeah. he reads it the book. I don't, I, yeah, I, I kind of want to read this book now. <laughs> you yeah. know? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Uh, this is great. I really wish you would learn how to fucking put text in better because it's really an eyesore and it hurts my brain. But he says, uh, uh, okay, however, this encounter is not only talked about in his book, but it's also discussed in hashtag Jenna Cantlose's biography, or at, 
She notes his obsession with me there, but several months passed before he released the book, making me aware of his two-sided nature. Before the book came out, Manson heavily pursued a friendship with me, telling me I was his idol, telling me he actually got his whole style by watching my film Dream a Little Dream, and my character, wait, sorry, hashtag Dream a Little Dream, and my character, hashtag Bobby Keller, was the inspiration for his entire book. Adrian wrote hashtag special needs. (laughs) Gosh, hold on. I don't know if that was the hashtag truth, but he used it as a way to manipulate me. Months later, he called me on Xmas morning to wish me a Merry Christmas and invite to a dinner party around the release of the book at the fancy Indian Hollywood uh, hang Dar Macabre, where customers sit around on pillows as in traditional Indian style. When I walked in uh, the room, it was quite clear that I was the guest of honor, quote unquote, as the whole room stopped to take pictures of the moment as he hugged me, then grabbed my hand and led me to a table by his side. The pic is from that moment. Oh, the pic that is on here. The pic is from that moment that he has here with him uh, next to him. We later went back to his home where the nightmare began. He has messed with my life forever since. Okay, hold on. That's where it ends. So basically, (laughs) this monster, he told you how much he admired you, and he called you up to wish you Merry Christmas, then invited you out to a swank soiree dinner where you felt like you were treated like the guest of honor. Exactly. And then he invited you to a party, his home afterwards, where I guess he offered you drugs and you said no it's and you went see, away on scale. Now that we know he's a manipulator, everything he's done in his past can be, uh, you know, twisted into twisted. being part of that. Exactly. Like, oh, he wasn't really being nice and kind. He had ulterior motives. His teachers can come out and say, he, that motherfucker pretended to not know math and made me teach him math. Basically. Savage. Ah. <sighs> I don't want to sound like I'm uh, being an asshole, but like uh, I, I feel like our boy might be tr- trying to g- get some of the attention on himself. No, oh, yeah, and I'm not denouncing anybody that's coming at Manila Manson. I'm not saying that what he's not a shit bag. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying, yeah, I think it looks like Corey Feldman's capitalizing. <laughs> it's just, it's because none of this shit exactly. None of this shit seems bad to me. He's he's wording it like it's all evil and sinister, but if you take out all the fluff, that's what we have. Marilyn Manson met him. He introduced him to some rad-ass rock dudes. He wished him Merry Christmas. He invited him to a party. He loved him so much. He bought him dinner, and then he invited him to a party where he offered him drugs, which, for all we know, he might have been like, oh, shit, I'm so sorry. My bad. You know, I forgot. You don't, you don't party anymore. Whatever. Don't go to a rock star's house, dude. What the fuck do you expect anyway? No offense. Was it at his house? I I got the feeling it was behind like a stage or something like, I don't know. It says here after the, after the party that he invited him to like the Indian dinner, he invited him to his house and that's when the nightmare began that night. The nightmare of him going to a party and getting offered Coke, but leaving unscathed. Okay. Like what (laughs) is there more to this? Did he fuck your ass? Did he rape you? Hopefully. See, maybe that's what the problem is. Maybe he sent him home without a good fucking. So and that's what and he's Men- pissed about. Mendoza put in here, he's a Manson fan. He said that he's read the book and it's pretty funny. Is is he spinning the narrative in that book of these stories in a different type of way? Is that the context you got, Mendoza, when you were reading this stuff about Corey Feldman? Did it come off like he was, you know, being uh manipulative or derogatory in the way he was talking about Corey Feldman? I don't know, but I, it sounds like I need to read the book. But in let the us book, know. Our boy Manson, he's saying like, "Oh, I found this cute little kid. He was a part of the Make a Wish Foundation, and I was trying to make him uh, feel better by hanging out with him." No, I just I just made that up. But that'd have been funny if, if that is how he spun it. that would have been donk. But that's so funny, man. Like I could say that. All right, well, I'm going to join in on this bandwagon too, and I'm tired of that motherfucker, Zach. Every time we record, I listen back, and he's treating me like a special needs handicapped guy, especially when he calls me a dumbass fucking beta cuck, you know, mentally challenged special needs kid. See, I've never called you that. that now I should, because it's funny. <laughs> no, it's, I don't know, and I'm not making light of people with special needs either, but I just think Corey Feldman has issues. He has fucking issues. Exactly. Did I ever talk about how I watched his documentary? Fucking uh, My Truth. Oh, yeah. And I, I skimmed it. I don't think I really watched it in full. What was your uh, opinions of it? I was I was surprised by how competent it was. Like, I was expecting just the fucking uh, the bottom of the barrel. It's like, oh, hey, this is a, a documentary. It has a narrative and it, it does what it's trying to do. 
Uh, it's not great. It's it's not terrible. Uh, yeah, I went in th- thinking it was going to be terrible, though. Yeah. Mendoza says, uh, to the an- answering the question I asked, he said, basically, Manson was just goofing on Feldman. He complimented Feldman, but Feldman was unaware that it was all just a goof. Awesome. So you're saying that it wasn't malicious and Feldman's just for a he's a sensitive flower see when 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 he when he said that he i i modeled my look around you in that movie i thought that sounds like a trolley comment that i would give somebody yeah that, <laughs> if i was trying to point out they they why dress not like just, a fucking why, idiot why not just say i model my look after michael jackson exactly or whatever dream a little dream is a shitty movie man why would you take any inspiration and, and actually bring that into your everyday life it's not exactly. a good flick terrible Dream a little dream too is even amazing. Younger, it's even amazing. Oh, he does. He he does say that he he felt it was Manson trolling Feldman. That's funny. Okay, so yeah. all right, so then he did. He was taking the piss out on him, right? He was he was. He's probably referring to like his early look, like when he was doing the whole smells like children thing, where he looked really goofy and he wore that top hat like cat and hat. I modeled my original look just like you. <laughs> Like, that's what I would say if I was trying to imply, like, yeah, dude, you dress like a fucking idiot. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, and these com okay, so the comments on this uh, Corey Feldman post are cracking me up because, you know, he has people that are, of course, going to support him through thick and thin. This person says, I just want to say that the way you symbolically cut your hair at the end of hashtag my truth doc made such a statement that I cried for the hundredth time during the entire film. I'm not making fun of this person. I just think it's fun. Did he cut his hair? He did. He he uh, he left like early on in the documentary. He establishes that he has that long braid. Like, yeah, I I, I kind of uh, I made a little pact to Corey that I wouldn't cut it until I I I, I fix this problem. And I I I, uh, I tell. Well, then I feel my story. Now I feel bad for I wasn't trying to take the piss. I didn't really know anything about the hair, so now I feel bad. I guess it was a nice. Uh, gesture i I remember when i was watching it it felt a little cringy but then i was like yeah it's it's kind of a cute sentiment you know uh, but it felt a little cringy just because it's it's our boy (laughs) this person says all caps omg Corey, i'm crying you were done so fucking wrong i can't even begin to imagine the shit you've had to endure i mean i i still don't think even if Manson was trolling him and he was just that friend that everybody kind of made a joke out of and that's why they kept him around, just don't hang out with those people anymore. There's, You know how many people I could bring up that I knew in school that were assholes like that to people? You just kind of fucking just, you just cut those ties. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Don't, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's just really weird to me. I guess I can't relate. Maybe someday I'll have someone to shitbag and just, dog pile on that I'll I'll end up eating my words like no I'm I'm jumping on this guy who's a fucking asshole man but hell yeah someday I'll be uh fucking me too and then Aaron will be like oh I fucking it was a uh, um, uh, terrible working with him he'd always show up late and he'd always fucking uh he always make these cringy ass jokes he'd always <laughs> fucking <laughs> Dude, this is uh, making me laugh. Uh, you're going to have to bleep this out when I say it, but he says, Mendoza saying, I was a huge Smashing Pumpkins fan when I was in middle school and high school, but I'm also a huge f- Oh, <laughs> right. hell yes. Are the two exclusive? Fucking like, is that a requirement? <laughs> like PH, PH f- represent. Hell yeah. Yeah, PH, pretty hot and gay. Is that what PH f- would stand for? What? Remember uh, Money Talks where he's like, when, he, when uh, Chris Tucker saw uh, had the lock clear, he's like, fact! And she's like, oh, oh, yeah. PHAT, pretty hot and tempting. That's a movie that's not very good. And Charlie Sheen's in that, who was accused of uh, play doing Corey Haim. So it all comes full circle. Exactly. Exactly. The Crisco kid. <laughs> you know what's funny is uh, fucking our boy uh, <laughs> Bat32 used to go by that moniker every once in a while on, uh, on the fucking... Uh, Exploited cinema. He used to call himself the Crisco Kid every once in a while, and that popped in my mind, and it sounded like I was calling Corey Haim the Crisco Kid, which is really mean. <laughs> like I was actually referring to Bat Thirty Two. I don't know why I'm finding it so fucking funny. Exactly. That is mean. Exactly. Would you say it to his face if he was alive? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that behind his back when he's dead. That's why I just clarified okay. what I meant by that. Oh. 
But yeah, we're, we're we're gearing up. We're getting on the fucking the third act, babe. When it, it became a uh, fucking like uh, her sister and the, her uh, the lover of her sister were looking for her. They came to this fucking hotel, found the uh, the registry where she used her real name. And yeah, we we talked over that scene too. Where fucking our boy Norman, he saw like after she wrote, like told her her fake name, wrote her real name. He knew like, oh, she lied about her name. Something's weird. But he didn't say anything, baby, because he's just a nice guy. Very wholesome. Loves his mother. Takes care of her, even. Here's a pretty good fun fact. Alfred Hitchcock tested the fear factor of Mother's Corpse by placing it in Janet Lee's dressing room and listening to how loud she screamed when she discovered it in there. Chad move. Yeah. What does that sound? Huh? What does that sound? It's like a clicking typing sound. Uh, I don't know. That's weird. Maybe it's just in my head. Maybe I'm just hearing it. Maybe I got Tuma. Exactly. There it is again. It's going click, 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 click. What the fuck is that? I don't know. Is it your okay, connection? Just... No, it's not like a connect. It sounds like it's literally in your bedroom. Oh, I don't know. It's I'm weird. Not either. Yeah. Anyway. Motherfucker, that's you. Is that you doing that? Huh? Sounds like you're doing... Oh, hear- fucking Adrian said it's like, how are you hearing Adrian? He should be muted. Hey, did I hear some laughing too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hold up. I, I we still, we're boomers, man. We got to figure this shit out. Like, how are we hearing you? <laughs> we got to figure that out, man. Cause that could, I mean, it's, it's cool that you, it's fine. But like, can you imagine if we get to a point where we have fucking a lot of motherfuckers in here and anybody can just chuck? <laughs> At yeah. any time, it for is it's supposed to have everybody muted when they come in by default. That's funny. Yeah, I'll have to look into that, and fix that, or maybe he's trolling. Nobody listening fucking knows what we're talking about. They can't hear him. Well, Mendoza, you don't have to disconnect, man. It's it's fine. I mean, like I said, I don't know why we were hearing it. We just need to figure out what what that's what that's about. But it's not, it's not bothering us. Uh, we just need to get it figured out before we have like a lot of people in here because that'll be funny. Hmm. But yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out, man. Don't worry about it. You don't have to go nowhere. Fucking, oh, we're total boomers. Oh, you can right click and and mute so that we care. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, I don't know. I don't know why it did that. And we need to figure out how to like uh, manually unmute people. This is really only going to be an issue if we have like a lot of people. But uh, if that comes, we'll have to learn how to manually unmute people when we maybe if they want to ask a question on the show at the end. But yeah, we, growing pains. We just got to figure it out. I already know what I must have fucked up whenever I was creating the channel, so I'll fix it when we're done. That's funny, man. I mean, I don't... We're learning new shit. I don't hear anything, man. I mean, if you want... I, go ahead and make a noise. He's saying, how about now? Yeah, we're good now. Yeah, and we might just still have to fix it on our end, too. I don't know. It's pretty funny, but I don't hear anything. We're all good, man. That's funny. I was like, what the fuck? So you couldn't hear that? I Only I could hear it? I couldn't. That's strange, but you're the one that's hosting it. Maybe that's why. Maybe because I'm just in the group like everybody else, right? Exactly. I'll Maybe fix that, it when we're done. Yeah. It sounded like typing or something. It wasn't a big deal. It sounded like a couple of like, key hits. And then I swear I heard him laugh when I was like, what the fuck is going on? It's a Tuma. Exactly. <laughs> but so this is a good thing. He wasn't fucking somebody. Like they weren't getting their fuck on. We would have heard it. Oh yeah, dude. That would be that would be bad. That's exactly why we need the uh the control over muting people because you never know what kind of crazies will be fucking getting podcast head while while listening to us. Or can you imagine, man? Someone. I mean, it's fine. You can you can jack off to Zach's voice, right? We get a oh, yes. we get some female listeners, you know, flipping their bean to the sound of mine. That's okay, but just. We might need to mute that stuff. Exactly. <laughs> He's like, no, you're not ruining the commentary, dude. It's fine. It's okay. It's not going to come through in the audio anyway, the recording. It's all good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's actually cool because we're kind of, ch- you can almost treat this like a soft opening of like a business, right? We're, we're working out the kinks. So, you know, we have uh, one or two people in here at a time when we've been recording these last uh, few day, few weeks. And uh, we're, we're kind of, you guys are helping us work out the kinks. So it's totally cool. And by work out the kinks, we mean uh, get out the nipple clamps, if you will. There you go. Working out the kinks. 
You know, I meant to say something earlier when you were talking about uh, Halford Hitchcock wanting to recast that private eye, and it made me think. I was watching another movie today where they did have to recast. I, I watched that All the Money in the World, that uh, Ridley Scott flick from 2017, where they had to recast Kevin Spacey after he got Me too Digitally, yeah, they had to CGI in the other guy who died recently, right? They didn't CGMI. They didn't CGI him, right? I thought he, I thought they re- literally had to refilm. Oh, didn't he die recently, though? He died yesterday, I think. Christopher Plummer? Exactly. Somebody posted a joke on Twitter. They were like, oh, fucking, he uh, he got the, the role that Kevin Spacey deserved before him uh, again. Like, uh, I forget how they worded it, but it was basically like, oh, Kevin Spacey should have died. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty... There's no way they CGI his face. It's like, what? That's weird. No, I think they... I think he literally had to go back and reshoot all the scenes that... You know, oh, well, he he did, but they could have CGI'd him into the scenes. I'm in. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I don't. This is the scene where fucking uh, the crane. She's going around. She's like, she's trying to finally get in and catch a look at fucking this kid's fucking weird mom that he keeps talking about. Fucking, because the, the mom, like, uh, they know, like, oh, she must have saw something. Maybe she knows where my sister is. Very, very fucking uh, alpha. That uh, statue right there, that's the same statue she sees in the sequel, too, in the in the room. It's green. You'd never guess that in the, the black and white movie. Hey, speaking of that, uh, rank the Psycho movies from, from uh, worst to best. Fuck. I'd probably... Uh, best is probably this one. Followed by two... And then probably four and then three. And I don't hate three. So I, I like the whole series. So I, I'll put Psycho one at the top, even though it's close. I, I like Psycho two in ways just as much. And it was the first one I ever saw. So if there's a little bit of a, it's got that little bit of an edge to it. But yeah, it's it's hard to ignore that this one's the, the groundbreaking one. Mm-hmm. But, but I think I think Psycho two is how you make a sequel. Exactly. That's that's a really it's a it's a movie that stands on its own. It's very different. Directed by Tom Holland and written before he played uh, fucking uh, Spider Man or whatever. <laughs> okay. That yeah. Same Tom Holland totally. And also, uh, it's got a great twist that you know I don't think you're ever going to r- rival the twist in the original Psycho, but it's got a great twist that you don't see coming as well. Mm-hmm. You know they. It's it's really really good. So that I think that's what makes the third movie as jarring as it does because it being the follow up to that, and we just get a really generic slasher that's missing any of those twists, really. Yeah. But yet that's you get Jeff Fahey in the nude. But yet that's the one Anthony Perkins had so much uh, input in, and you know, he directed that one. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was his baby, and like what. Well, I don't know. But at that point, I think he was just cashing checks. Like, yeah, I'm the psycho guy. Exactly. He embraced it by that point. See, that's the thing. You just got like, it'd probably suck. Like, it's easy to say, like, oh, I would never fucking, like, be like, you know, uh, Kevin Bacon was for a while and denounce fucking shit. But it's like, yeah, I don't know. Like, how does Hollywood work? We know it's fucking weird. We know these people are fucking like, yeah, like they'll blacklist you for reasons. And yeah, it's hard telling until you're in the fucking, you're in the thick of it. So I, I have to, uh, I, I looked more up into the whole Christopher Plummer, Kevin Spacey thing. No, they did do reshoots. The movie was done. Like there's even photos with Kevin Spacey in the movie, right? And the movie was gearing up for release and all that shit with Kevin Spacey hit at the wrong time. And they literally cast, uh, you know, Christopher Plummer to come in. Who, who, uh, he states. Let me see. Uh, really, Scott states that was his first choice anyway. But the studios wanted a quote unquote bigger name. Uh, but yeah, they had to cast him. They 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 brought him in and they had to fucking reshoot all but one scene, redo them all. And pull in everybody. Mm-hmm. So, and the only, there's one scene they said where Kevin Spacey can still technically be seen in the film, but it's like an, it's a wide shot that would have been way too expensive. They said to redo, but you can't see his face, so they had to keep it. But it's like the one shot of the original Marty McFly, Eric Stoltz in uh, Back to the Future. If you know where to look, 
Where is it at again? Which shot? It's uh, whenever they're in the uh, the the fucking diner, and uh, he like puts his hand on Marty's. Big oh, twist. We getting the we getting the twist. Fucking M Night Shyamalan. Hell yes. So yeah, like basically, uh, we've talked about this coming scene many times. The scene where they're basically explaining to all the audience what just what they just saw, and apparently, like, uh, they had to basically the reason it's in the movie is because of studio interference because uh, Hitchcock doesn't like the scene or didn't like the scene, and uh, wanted to take it out. But basically, like, yeah, like everybody was like, "Oh, it's we need it to just to tell people what just happened and all this shit." And the like, yeah, like I can see people be like, "What?" and like not knowing, but like, yeah, like at some point, it's just like fucking let them let them watch it again if they don't understand, <laughs> instead of just coming right out and explaining everything. But in this movie, I think it kind of works because it's kind of the movie that created that whole rule. Like, oh, this is what you don't want to do. But we give this movie a pass because it did it first. Yeah, and way. it's he, he literally just kind of recounts everything. Here's what happened, folks. I mean, people in the scene with me. Yeah, there's plenty of people who probably are. We're sh- not stupid. Are, are sheltered enough to not even know what like a split personality is and stuff like that. So, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, like you said, it's just one of those things where if you're hard on it, it's just because you're you're jaded by all the shit that came after it. But, yeah, back in the day, you would have probably been forgiving or understanding or maybe even informed by it. So, I, I, to wrap up, because uh, I was looking up the uh, this about this movie, right? So, I rem- now it's all coming back to me. Because remember when all the Kevin Spacey thing went down and they had to, like, they were in trouble it was reported that all the actors agreed to come back for the reshoots with Christopher Plummer for free because like, you know, almost standing in solidarity, like we support the cause. We're not going to ask for any money. Right. Mm. And I remember that being in the news, but then it came out that that was not the truth because, uh, they did Wahlberg did Mark Wahlberg took 1.5 million to come back for the reshoots. And then what a beta. And then, uh, his co-star, the mom of the kidnapped, uh, Michelle Williams, she, where was it at? Uh, if anything, he should be the one guy try like really doing it for free. Cause like anybody finding out he took more money is just going to reflect poorly on him. And I remember this says Williams, like, Michelle Williams only received $80 in per diems. And I remember that was controversial too. Like, cause then it's, then it was the whole thing about men being paid more than women. Like what the fuck? Uh, and it says here, uh, so it would have been 5 million, right? So, no, my bad. Williams, so she only made 625000 and Mark Wahlberg made, what, fucking two and a half times that? Uh, yeah, that became a whole thing. And then it said here, uh, in response to the backlash, because he got a lot of bad PR for it, uh, Mark Wahlberg taking that big paycheck, uh, he he donated the $1.5 million to uh, the Time's Up movement in Williams' name. So, you know, mm. some damage control there. Fucking Wahlburgers. Yeah. Did you know the goat used Dang, to have? This scene, this scene, this scene does go on a long time. Like he's really, expl- he's really schooling us. He's really educated. That's what, that's what our boy said. Hitchcock. He's like, it goes on too long. It's boring. Let's cut it. And it's, it's and kind like, of, no. it is kind of a, a downer way to end an awesome movie. Like the way it, the, the way it, I mean, you kind of, you kind of could have ended it at the house. I mean, I get it. We get the iconic scene with him like behind bars and shit sitting there or whatever. Yeah. They could have just, they could have just like had them go in here, start talking and then it cuts away and then it goes to uh, Norman's yeah. like, inner monologue. Yeah. That perfect. It would have been so much better because you want that iconic shot. But, but yeah, this is like, uh, it's like edging too far to where you, you now you, you fucking, you can't come anymore. It's like that now, but like watching it for the first time, you're probably like, oh, and uh, yeah, fucking, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming. Fucking Jerry Seinfeld yeah. over here. You see, some men like to wear dresses. Exactly. Like me. Real men. No. Oh, hell yeah. 
Fuck yeah. You remember that episode of King of the Hill where Bill was becoming Lenore? Mm-hmm. That's fucking great, man. I'm Lenore. He's a Chad. He's wearing that fucking sundress and that sun hat. Exactly. Dude, he's still fucking talking. Fuck yeah, he's he's the Chad. He demands how, your attention. How long has this been going on? How long is this scene? I, I should have been timing it. It's probably like five to ten minutes. Fuck my life, dude. I'm going to read some comments. <laughs> All right. Somebody commented on our boy Pat's interview with Phil and Selmo where they just basically said Excel channel one billion ads. Okay, so I don't know. We don't really control that on that video and it's I don't know. I don't think it's I don't think it's monetized because it's like it's got some music in there that wasn't ours to share, like Phil and Selmo's music. So they get the monetization. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're and it's an interview, so it is what it is, man. We live in YouTube land. We live in the twenty fucking first century. Ads, ads are a thing. We just gotta get used to it. But thanks for commenting. Row ads. Hey, you. Speaking of which, I was. I think it was like the last podcast we put out. I noticed it had ad breaks in the middle of it, like the commentary. And I don't know if that's just a matter of maybe we forgot to turn it off. Mm, maybe. But I don't know it. We, so if you guys catch that, let us know. But there should never be ads in our commentaries, like in the middle of it. Obviously, that defeats the purpose. It makes it too hard to actually sync up with the movie. Before and after is fine, but we always remove that shit from taking place in the middle. So if we if we miss it or if we fuck up, just let us know. Here's a fun fact. I heard a rumor that like this last shot was like done kind of like abruptly. And like uh, our boy Hitchcock, he was he he didn't usually do things like that. He liked to like kind of like really think about shit. So this last scene here, where it kind of dissolves to the the skeleton of the mom and then to the car, like basically he he kind of went out on a whim. He's like, yeah, let's do it. And then like he he wasn't sure that he liked it. So basically like uh, he ordered like multiple copies of the movie, like one where it did this dissolve and one where it didn't. And then depending on, like, closer to the release date, he'd be like, okay, use that one. And uh, apparently he went with the with the uh, Dissolve. He was one of those directors that was that big to where, like, he could fucking uh, order, you know, multiple cop, multiple versions for all of these. But it doesn't help it. Why don't they just end it on his look? Uh, like, did that add anything? Did them dragging that fucking pond add anything at the very end? There's some symbolism in there. Yeah, like uh, it fucking turns into his mom, and then it turns like it, it becomes the chain I was reading. Yeah. I, I think that goes a little too deep. <laughs> I don't know if that's... No, I think dra- dragging the lake is... Uh, I think, like, yeah, that needed to be there. I would have, like, uh, had it playing during the end credits, but, like, this movie doesn't have any end credits because it was made back in the day when you didn't need them. Uh, career opportunities commentary our uh, boy listener Gio Nacho I uh, don't think I've seen your comments before so welcome aboard uh, if you're a new listener uh, career opportunities he says this shit was funny as fuck I loved your stories about your first job your dad flipping over your car and folding in front of your shitty boss LMAO I'm glad I'm glad my 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 member my childhood can bring you joy my, my fucking terrible exactly. memories <laughs> uh no it's fun i like sharing that stuff thanks for listening and uh and and by the way yeah. if you guys haven't already noticed self-deprecation is the name of what we do you know let's laugh our our shortcomings our misfortunes are for your entertainment so they can be not for not right our long comings too our long comings uh let's see here uh are we i guess i guess i'll read the fucking uh the live stuff, you know, that I find out because it's, we don't really read that stuff when we do them or should we, should we do that? Should we start reading the live stuff on the lives? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I'll hold on to those. I'm going to hold on to those. All right. Um, on blood sport, the last film of Jean-Claude January, uh, gamer guys reviews. He says blood sport is the best street fighter movie. Anytime I watch it, I feel a sudden urge to go into a training montage while Stan Bush sings out of the Coomer day about the Coomer day. Aaron Canon films wasn't brought back. You're probably thinking of Orion pictures. Stop being like Mac and believing everything on the internet is true. 
Fuck you. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I'd love to hear a cinema enema on the Alien franchise. It's a fascinating series with a lot to discuss, especially with the later entries. No, absolutely. I just got a brand new, not that you guys give a fuck. I got. I added a new uh, Alien to my uh, NECA collection today, and I'm, I'm very, very excited about it. But oh, yeah, yeah. Alien, I, I really want to tackle more Alien in the future for sure. Uh, let's see gamer guys also uh, comments on our Batman returns commentary. We did that a handful of years ago with Josh James around the holidays. He says, I know this film has garnered a large appreciation, but I always found it to be okay at best. Uh, this film is what happens when you let a guy have a hundred percent of creative control and he goes a bit overboard with the freedom he has. It has its moments, but I'll take Batman 89 any day of the week over Batman returns to collect a check. I disagree with you wholeheartedly. I think the control he gave, they gave Tim Burton on the heels of the success of the first one for this one is what makes it so special. It's what makes it so zany and off the wall because it's pure concentrated Tim Burton of that era. And it's so dark. I like it. I mean, I have to disagree with you a hundred percent. Oh yeah. It's it, to me, it's what makes it so special is just how much it is fucking Beetlejuice with Batman or something. Right. But darker. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Uh, <laughs> married with children. It's a bundyful life. Uh, JW comments sucks. That's it. What? That you didn't get to watch the TV show or we suck. Fucking beta. The cock. Are you are we talking about the cocks you were sucking? Probably that. I don't know. That's good shit. I'm going to downvote him. No, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> I, I only upvote. All right, David Capper, uh, this is all going to be, or for the next few, we're going to have blood sport. David Capper, our boy, he says, just a few suggestions for upcoming themed months. A fall with Seagal or Steven Seagal, September to remember. Summertime Stallone or July with Sly. Al Pacino, April. May Day, May with J.J. Abrams, Jackie Chan, June, Willis's Wonderland, a.k.a. All Die Hard December, June with John Carpenter, Chow Young Fat February, okay, Asian Action Adventure August, All-Star Assembly, a.k.a. A-A-A-A-A-A, Patrick's Spring or Swayze Crazy March, (laughs) French New Wave November, actually forget this one, it'll be boring, Uh, Classic Blood Sport Session, boys, signed D. Dang. I think some of those were fucking rad, actually. Uh, I know part of that's I think it's pretty much in jest, though, but I, I would I would do a lot of these, man. Mm-hmm. I'd be all about a summertime uh, July with Sly. I think it's fucking clever as shit. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Seagal movies would be torture, man, but I would do them. I would do some Seagal. Why not? I think he's fucking a hack, but no, that's awesome, man. We'll uh, what can you call it a flock of Seagal exploitation, a, a flock of Seagals. Yeah, we could do that. If I can uh, convince Zach to do a month of Stallone, hell yeah. I think I need to give him a break for a month or two to cleanse his palate. Exactly. And reverse, uh, you know, the brain damage I gave him. Uh, continuing on Bloodsport, Witch King. Commentary on a great film. Zach singing Foreigner is my ringtone now. Dog. Adrian Mendoza, uh, who's with us today listening, he says, big money rustlers, that is all. Yeah, man, we got to do it. So I... I was talking to Zach and uh, I was like, yeah, why don't we just go ahead and do it and do ICP exploitation? And I guess I fucking pulled the veil on a big troll he wanted to do on me. I wasn't supposed to suggest that or be down for it because he wanted to shock me with it. Exactly. But we should do it, man. When are we going to do a big money rustless? What what could we do hypothetically for an entire exploitation month of ICP? We're going to do big money hustlers and big money rustlers and their shockumentary documentary that came out when the great Malenko album came out. All right. <laughs> It's going to be amazing. Uh, Witch King also says, Twitter on Bloodsport, Twitter users react, Soul Man. Yeah, one of these days, we got to fucking do that Soul Man. Hell yeah. We got to do, would that go over well? Could we get away with blackface exploitation? Hell yes. I don't, I mean, because it, it, it is all in fun and it's just so silly and it's not like we're condoning it. We're just saying, look, this is fucking ridiculous. Exactly. Fucking, uh, the, that, that's what you got to do, baby. You do what you got to do. I think this might be my comment of the week and it's somebody that's uh, given some criticism to our boy Zach here on American History X commentary. Uh, listener by the name of The Only Skywalker donk that shit is never gonna stick stop saying it bro lol zach tell him why this guy's wrong i'll tell you why you're wrong it, it basically it's because you see what's going on is fucking uh our boy here adrian mendoza he says it fucking our boy uh 
the fucking uh, the goat he says it fucking uh max says it when we're when we're writing in our comments basically that's the the only meme i came up with that does stick basically you couldn't be more wrong <laughs> and uh, I wish, like all my other ones, would uh, would have stuck too, but they didn't. That's the one that well, did. What's funny is if you're just sort of a fly buyer and you find our channel and you, like I said, you find and maybe this guy just stumbled across the channel and he listened to American History X and that's all he'd ever heard from us. He's gonna get a lot of that shit out of context, especially the troll stuff, right? He's just gonna pop into this commentary that he's never heard anything else to compare it to, and he's gonna hear this one dude talking like this and donk a lot. Mm-hmm. And he's not going to get it. So I'm going to give him a pass because I understand, but you're wrong. You're wrong. Exactly. Um, and I think, oh, fuck. I'm going to end with a monkey shines commentary oh, uh, yeah. comment. The silhouetted animator, our boy, he says he, he tags one hour, 30 minute, 40 seconds, or I guess Zach had pitched an idea for a brand new tune. He says, you guys do know there is a song called Come Junkies by the band Jenna Torturers, right? Jenna Torturers, that's uh, the band featuring featuring uh, Mrs. David Vincent, the singer of Morbid Angel. He married their, uh, I think, her lead, their lead vocalist. But, uh, that bums me out because that was going to be what Mac and Zach changed his name to if we ever decided to change our names to Come Junkies. Hey, uh, so do we have any questions? Uh, Mendoza, I know you're online. Do you have anything you want to uh, address? No. <laughs> okay, Mendoza saying, I'm sorry, Aaron and Zach, if I ruined tonight's episode. I hope I didn't make too much noise. I hope Zach can mute it. You didn't make much noise. Trust me. I only heard it in my monitors. It's not going to come through in the it's not going to come through. I the, never heard it. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. Gonna... I think it has something to do with him hosting. It's not going to come through in the final episode that is going to be for everybody. And and it wasn't even much anyway. I just heard like a couple tappings. Like, like, what is that? That's it. No, it's totally fine, man. The magic of editing and what is actually recorded, it's not going to hurt a fucking thing. Did you have any comments, man? Oh, okay, I had to ask. Uh, Mendoza's asking, what's your length and girth? I, I had to Fuck ask. Yeah. I, uh, we, I got a measuring thing I could go get real quick. <laughs> no, let's just say it's big enough. It's big enough to satisfy Zach. That's for damn sure. Oh, well, this has got to be big at all to satisfy me. <laughs> I, I guess not. It's big enough, man. It's big enough. I'll just say... It is bigger than average. And I have researched the average. I'm not saying I'm Lenny Kravitz, but it is technically bigger than average. So there I, you go. I am Lenny Kravitz. And if we're talking girth, you know, I, you know, I, 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 I like to, I like to think we're, I like to think we're talking mini Coke can here. Mini Coke can, mini Coke can. Let's just, let's do the toilet paper roll test on the show live. Wait, what is the toilet roll paper test? What's the toilet roll paper test? If your dick can fit in the toilet paper roll test, if it can fit it's in the toilet too... paper roll, it's it's not thick enough. <laughs> I never heard of that test. Um, I don't know, man. I think a miniature Coke can can could fit in a toilet toilet paper roll, and a a fucking mini Coke can is pretty thick, man. You're talking about a monster. You're talking about you're talking about one of those big thick dicks that are only found in Japanese animes that are like the size of fucking fucking grown forearms and shit uh fucking uh, my my dick's pretty tight to toilet paper roll it fits though it's tight i'd have to try it i guess I, I might be underestimating or overestimating the uh the girth of a toilet paper roll i'm very curious now so maybe that's a patreon exclusive maybe maybe we'll take pictures of the before and after shots of the toilet paper roll and you'll see that mine is demolished in the after Amazing. We'll make that a Patreon thing. Why not? Uh, all right. Well, if there is no other comments, uh, yep. Adrian, thank you so much for joining us, brother. And uh, for anybody else that popped in and out, uh, thank you so much. Keep this going. I want to go ahead and reiterate, if this is your first time listening to us on somewhere like YouTube, make sure you just take a second to like the video. That's going to help us out immensely when we have that interaction and the videos liked. It helps fool the algorithms into basically saying that people want to hear us. We know that's not true, but let's fucking... Let's fool the bots and uh, subscribe if you're first timers and uh, listen to us on podcast services, wherever you get your podcasts, we're there. Uh, so go ahead and follow us there and leave us five star reviews. It's the same thing as liking a video on Facebook. It's the same principles. Give us subs over there. Give us feedback. Give us ratings. Do all that shit so we can expand and grow. 
And uh, if you guys want to support us anymore, we do have a Patreon, which can get you access to uh, hanging out with us while we do these weekly BTMs and cinema animas and things like that while we're recording. And uh, you also get every uh, all the content three days early, which is sort of a standard. We got uh, we got some archived material that's only on the Patreon uh, stuff that was too hot for TV, uh, including. Uh, I don't know what we got. Prank calls gone wrong. We I know Riverman's got pickup videos. I think he's got a new one coming out. Riverman resurrected the hobo with a shotgun podcast. And he's got a I think he's got a new episode of that going up if it's not already up. But, you know, so there's exclusive stuff. Mac and Zach save the world. They put an exclusive show up uh, uh, monthly. Matt, Zach and I have committed to doing the entire Ash vs. Evil Dead uh, series as commentaries bonus for Patreon. So a lot of shit over there. Uh, and also Teespring if you guys wanted to support us while wearing some swag. So uh, I will leave it there, Zach. Do you got any uh, final comments? Fucking uh, no. All right. Well, thank you guys. We'll be back next week with another uh, choice pick from our boy Zach. Peace. Bye bye, puppets. End of the week at the Revival House Next month's theme, you gotta figure it out Italian zombies are Pauly Shore I slash it with the knife and the girl next door And one second in, get it all queued up and ready Hit play in three, two, one Bye bye puppet Zach Pete in a solo cup band Goodness, Kirk Cameron's love and Josh Scott failed and River Man's bail Bye bye puppet Sounds good, like this country used to.